Greetings and salutations, friends, and uh, welcome back to more Rogue Trader. With everyone's favorite white-haired harem, of course, Cassia and Argenta. As we arrive at the prison planet to do uh, perhaps what we did yesterday in our D&D session. I, I take it everyone enjoyed it. We purged heretics, we made sure that the little village was free of taint, and that only the good and the honest remained behind to uh, see their oats in the fields of Lathander's fertile fields. Fields of fields? Yeah. Yeah, well, we're just gonna double down on that, the fields of fields. But first... It is time to engage with your audience, as we've got some options here for party members. Cassia and Argenta are, of course, horror members, as is Adelblad, as they, they are thus above reproach, obviously. Of course, Adelblad best waifu. But whichever gets second and first place here amongst Pascal, Henrix, and Idira will come with us down to the prison planet, as there's just not enough room on the shuttle. And we haven't developed I the have, technology yet to, oh, I don't know, let the shuttle lift off and come and fetch the one last member of our party yet. It's a little bit too far up the tech tree for 40k, I'm afraid. Nietzsche says, um, his game is absurdly buggy in Chapter 4, to the degree where it can essentially softlock or even hardlock your playthrough. Happened to me. Oof. Well, I am hoping it'll take me so long to get there that it'll all be fixed by then. <laughs> I hope. I mean, to be fair, this is Owl Cat in a nutshell. They do tend to make exceptionally large games that get very, very long and very, very complex. And with so many quests, eventually they'll overlook something. Uh, Pathfinder 2, uh, Wrath of the Righteous had this problem, where at several instances you could actually completely and utterly break your entire video game. Which is non-ideal. Not ideal indeed. Non-ideal indeed. I take it everyone watched yesterday's D&D &D episode as well, all right, Little Matt Bricks? I'm sure you did. It is your duty, after all. It was a fun episode. A long episode. Six goddamn hours. But we got to burn a lot of heretics. We should have just done it earlier, though. Art was right. If Art had simply been allowed to commit violence when Arch wanted to, this entire questline would have been wrapped up in about 30 minutes, but no. We have to investigate if they're real heretics. Hmm. Yeah, we have a shrine to Satan right here. Ah, 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 says everyone else. We don't know if it's real Satanism or merely ironic Satanism. Arch does not care. Arch does not care at all. Arch believes that it's bad regardless, frankly, and would like to smash the heretical shrine. But was Arch allowed to do this thing for the benefit of everyone in the party? No. And what did we have to do then? We'd had to burn, what, two dozen peasants to death instead? Ah, this... This is what softness leads to. This is what misplaced mercy leads to. Hopefully some lessons will have been learned from this, and the soft, fish-pudding-esque values of the church will be suitably refocused in a more hardline direction. Yes. Alright, let's see here. Uh, looks like we've got Pascal and Heinrichs with 57 and 27% of the votes, respectively. So Pascal and Heinrichs is his then. Let us go off on our adventures. There we go. Oh yes, toy box mod. You should be very careful when using toy box for uh, Pathfinder. Um, I only use it for um, respecking because I hate that thing in so many games, RPGs, where they go like, oh hey, this is a character, he's really cool, but we deliberately built him like a potato. 
Why did you do that? Uh -huh. I won't tolerate weakness. We just elected that we could insert our penises inside of you, and you wouldn't really I have the power to, to object. Exploring. Like, I mean, yes, but that's not a good reason. God, I hate that. I hate that so much. You should always be able to just spec people from zero, okay? Because I don't really care about their backstory that much. It's like, I was a city guard captain all my life. Well, you're a druid now. Why? Because it's my goddamn video game, that's why. Ah, Raquel. The love interest, the mind squeeze of that Vox operator. Who are you? Did you come from the planet? Are you reinforcements? Saints teeth, I thought you'd never come. Adelblad, teach the riff. <laughs> this is why we always bring Adelblad. Adelblad glares at the woman, his brows furrowing. Female. The person before you is his supreme gloriousness. Greatness, sir, art of terror, von Valencius. A rogue trader. Although you are, from what I gather, a subject of another dynasty, you would do well to introduce yourself with a proper decorum. And on, sir. Captain Rachel Vakani, servant of House Winterscale, and the pilot of this shuttle. It is an honor to be greeting his lordship, Von Valencius. Hmm, is this present right under the planet of the rebellion? Eh. The only settlement on Rykad Philia is a question. penal colony. Fires the prisoners answer. work in the mines and the domed quarries. They mine sulfur, ceram, dust, and sand, which then melted down our rather nondescript places, or so it was prior to current events. What happened? There's been a prison riot on the planetoid. Sadly, it's being led by the prison warden himself. That is unusual. The Honorable and the Thagon Castelliga. He has allied himself with a rabble that he himself was supposed to watch, and declared Rykad Philia to be an independent of the authority of the system's lawful governor. Aha. Uh -huh. So it's Disney World in Florida, basically. I came here as a shuttle pilot alongside the Honorable Yvain Winterscale, son of Caligos Winterscale, rogue trader, vanquisher of Xenos, forever triumphant of the enemies of humanity. Young Lord Winterscale wished to speak to the Warden personally, so he could put an end to this lawless treason. He and his escort went ahead and... She grows paler. I haven't been able to contact them over the Vox for a very long time. I'm sorry, but I believe that young Lord Evander's flower has probably been plucked by multiple prison inmates by now. It's what happens in penitentiaries like these, you know, extended periods away from female companionship, etc., etc., breeds a certain form of desperation in men. I'm sorry, what were, what were we talking about? Oh, yes, prison riot. Why would the winter scale feel the need to parley with the dissident? Is a personal matter. Master Castelliga, the seditious warden, is Lord Yvain's childhood friend. When my lord heard of the riot, the news saddened him greatly, and so he rushed here without delay, in hopes of bringing his old friend to his senses, no doubt. The first winter scale in my memory prefers to talk first rather than shoot and slash. Young Lord Winterscale is not his father's shadow. If he is determined to save his friend, he won't back down. I pray to the throne that he is alive and well and unflowered. He has been gone for such a long time, and I really don't like this place. I'm surprised you haven't been deflowered, honestly. You're standing here completely unguarded, a feminine form in the middle of a long-term harsh prison complex, and yet you have all of your clothes still intact. If I was a suspicious fellow, I'd be wondering which side you were on. Theobald executed his wife and only son on the mere suspicion of treason against House Orcelio. So why did the noble Evain rush to save someone who had betrayed his house? Do bonds of friendship give one the right to make inexcusable mistakes? Hmm. Anything else? Some of the rebels have holed up at the barracks. I don't know how many, but given this is the only way through to where the negotiations are taking place, I would expect heavy resistance. Please take caution, your lordship. Lord Winterscale's guard mined the entrance so the rebels couldn't get to the shuttle. I have no more questions. You may excuse yourself, woman. The woman freezes for a moment before asking hesitantly, Your Lordship, if I may have a minute of your time, 
I wouldn't ever have dared to trouble you with a personal matter, but the situation in any case, have you been to the capital of Rikard Minores yet? I wanted to ask if you saw a man there, a communications officer by the name of Jasper. Does this seem like the correct, <laughs> correct time? Remain disdainfully silent. Hmm. Uh, well, you know, it's a nice little side romance, you know, two low-born peasants wishing to remain in one another's companies, presumably eventually to grind their filthy, unwashed genitalia against one another to produce yet further tiny little grubby peasantoids to work in the fields. I suppose we can be generous this once and inform her that he is still alive. Ah, ah, yes, of course, your lordship. We, we will. It's a great honor. And then, thank you both for saving Aspar and for letting me know he's all right. You can tell by the desperation in her eyes that she is exhausted, frightened, and wished to be off this planetoid as soon as possible. Hmm. A new challenge for me? Oh. All right, well. When the faithful are idle. Heresy grows. That's uh, that's I one of those indications that this particular service. prison riot isn't merely just a uh, large-scale disagreement as to the quality of the food being served or the entertainment available. Uh, Gabriel Matea donates ten rons. You can uh, you can respect companions on your ships. Victory away. Can you do from zero though? I expected maybe you couldn't. I'll I'll check it out though. An idle drifter donates $20. Thank you very much, sir. An ogrin or freebooter free would be a nice touch of unstoppable carnage. With the many psycho and warp sensitive companions, how about a character like Jurgen from Cypher's Kane? Just to mix things up if you try to recruit the them. <laughs> Honestly, I agree. I think we need more spice here. We need more diversity. For a deck officer, your physical fitness is impressive, Master Versarian. I take it your position as Seneschal is extremely Fire demanding. Fire is the answer. <laughs> Young man, Rosette or no, stop lavishing these condescending compliments on me. If I were your age, you would be no match for me. Yeah, seriously, Adults don't talk about Adelblard's physical capabilities, sir. And howling. Like, Adelblard is the Follow equivalent physical f force to a space marine in full power armor. You don't get to be like, wow, it's remarkable for an old grandpa like you to be able to kill 35 heretics single-handedly. Well, yeah, it is, but that's not part of the point here. But yes, diversity is what we need. Not of the Adara variant, mind you. But an Ogryn companion. I, I would love an Ogryn companion. Or uh, a, a, a green skin. Why not? I mean, we've got an Eldar, so... And bow before me. You Stand have been ambushed. I disagree. I don't, I don't feel like I've been ambushed. Uh, I really don't. I feel like I actually, uh... Hmm. Uh, Genta, unfortunately, has kind of Adelblad in his way here, so... I would love an Ogren. An Ogren would be the coolest thing Nothing ever. I... Nice, big, meaty Ogren. With unique weaponry, like you could make him a Bulgrin with a shield. Uh, of course, Repiguns would be hilarious in a game like this. Repiguns would be just... <laughs> Loads of enemies. How about you all disappear in rightfully uncontrollable undone. fire and munitions? As the Emperor commands, I act. And a freebooter, yes. A nice big orky borky would also be quite lovely. Honestly, I probably didn't need to go Gosh, full burst fire weak. mode for two dudes, but, uh, you know, we're making sure. Wow, that was some... Yeah, yeah, no, your, um, your title of Nimble Prisoner is well earned, sir. I have, it's, I um, have lost. I need a foothold. It's a rare day I see somebody dance away from a full auto burst of bolt of fire from point blank range. No, no question about it. Let's see to it. God, I wish I could just AoE buff everybody with strength. That would be hilarious. And we got a Space Marine, which... Honestly, I'd rather have an Ogryn than a Space Marine. Obviously, I know why they're giving you a Space Marine. because it's, it's a Space Marine. Space Marines are goddamn cool. I'm not complaining. And it's a Space Wolf, too, which is at the least... It's it's a nice... It's a nice unconventional choice, you know? It's not a fucking Ultramarine or anything, which is nice, but still... 
And Ogryn would be a, would have been really, really Victory awesome. Victory is imminent. Ah! Ooh, a rattling. A rattling would be fun too. I would quite like a rattling. Alright, let's check out the new uh Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the the arc gun I found aboard the mecha or aboard in the Mechanicus one. Temple is proving its value. Not bad, not bad. Shields me. Kick. Really? Kick. You're fighting a sister of battle, and your preferred former choice of offense is to kick her. A bold move, if also a somewhat foolish one. Step aside. The navigator is coming. A navigator is coming. I am a navigator, not a servitor. Heresy is the question. Fire Me? is the answer. If you insist, <laughs> Lord Captain. Uh Oh, is she She's disarmed, is she? Is that what the kick does? Presumably. Well, isn't that just downright unfortunate? Okay, well. So much for that. Robert Wantsworth donates ten dollars. Thank you very much. Uh, this is why I've been asking for a Necron companion. That it would be a truly change of perspective, especially if we have the Eldar companions. Yeah, something to um, see. One of the things as well that is really cool that games don't do enough of, really, is you didn't stand a explore chance. companions differently. Now. Personally, I don't think you should... Ooh, hello. I don't think you should necessarily set up a situation where companions can be actively hostile to one another. Because I usually don't like the idea of companions... Um, like, where you ha we have to, like, okay, As you either Emperor bring command, this guy or this judgment. guy. And you can't actually have both of them. Because I like having both, you know? Especially in games as long as these. I... Get me a target. I haven't been able to finish a full playthrough of uh, Wrath of the Righteous, for example. Like, that's a hundred hour game. And at the end of it, I'm just starting to get sick of role-playing games, frankly. And so, needing to play through it twice to get court. slightly different dialogue or slightly different options, oh boy, um, that, that's gonna... That's going to need to be a truly remarkable piece of video gaming at that point. So I kind of like to get as much of it as Not possible. For me. Which is why, um, uh, really, you missed that. Uh, Wrath of the Righteous has a really cool mod in the toy box. Uh, that makes it so that all of your companions will actually chime in, regardless of whether or not they're in the party. <laughs> I don't know what you're time. doing, but Reduce stop it. Dust. So that even if you don't have, uh... None shall when I was a child, I was once initiated into some of the mysteries of tech ministry. I still have questions that you might be able to answer, Magos. The imparting of knowledge to ladies who lack the proper initiation is an unfortunate necessity, not a sign of trust. I am not at liberty to divulge the mysteries granted to me when I received... Ooh. Uh, so that even if somebody isn't in your party, they can still chime into dialogue with their input. Because I feel like it, it expands upon the world at large. Obviously, there are very good role-playing reasons for why you should not be able to have a, oh, I don't know, a, a psychic blank, for example, right next to a psyker, as that would lead to uh, countless complications, but... <laughs> Gerenatia asks, would you allow a blood raven aboard your ship? Only after locking every door I imaginably, imaginably could. Even then, I'd expect a certain, you know, loss in, uh, in valuables, but still. Uh, Sand Doom says, softness towards the traitor. Burn them all, my lord and saviour arch. May the ashes of the traitors teach the future panel penal colonists on what happened to those who bit the emperor's hand of mercy. May they indeed. I'll lay claim to the stars. See, significant physical punishment is the only way to impart a sufficiently strident message upon those who may have strayed from his light. 
I forgot about that part I of the video game. Beg your pardon? A mysterious image. Oh, well. I, uh... I know what that image is. Right. We, uh... We've had some, some pretty festive orgies around here. Some little things that wouldn't come to come talk, he did, except he used to ask questions before now he was mostly a gushing sermon. Some gibberish about the path of purgation. Sanctity of sacrifice, seeing with the blinded eyes. It's not a yes, Master of Wardens, of course, Master of Warden. You would say, say whatever rubbish you wanted as long as the tasty optimate meals kept coming. I thought everyone else was doing the same, nodding just to please the big man. I was wrong. After that, the people in the barracks started yapping on about purgation and blindness, too. So the warden is the source of the heretical treachery. Service guarantees oh citizenship. Oh, boy. Yep, yep. They're, um, yep. 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 It's, uh, it's a bit above the average prison, uh, prison Tonomari. outbreak right there. Like, that's an American prison level outbreak right there. Good God. Hmm. Well, we also know about, of course, the blinded. Because that is exactly what the people back on Light Cab Minoris were talking about. My brethren, the door is nigh. The Optimates will guide us into a new existence. Yes, yes, dear brother. Have a taste of my steel. My dear brethren. <laughs> hmm. There appears to be some form of disagreement in between the, uh, the rebels. Thank the throne. Normal looking faces. We thought we were going to die here with these nutters. Please don't shoot us, your nobleness. Let us speak a word. Well, this is a welcome change. Talking before shooting. Still, Lord Captain, the look of this ragtag bunch hardly inspires trust. Mm. Give me a character's watch. So, to your associate. Oh, so they are pirates of the void. The man grunts, huffs, and makes up his mind. Well, now that's out of the bag. Our fellows were supposed to come get us a long time ago, but they got tied up somewhere. Void Kraken's gullet with them. And in all this time, we've had to wait. This happened. Pardon me for trying to pull the synth wool over you. It's just that we want nothing to do with those, this whole warden nonsense. So what now? Will you let us go? Go? Uh, not quite so fast, sir. You're going to have to give me a little bit more of a reason for that. As the deal, we're honest. Quite... Quiet inmates. We didn't want to riot, but well, sitting it out wasn't really an option either. The warden's lapdogs made short work of those who refused to join in the festivities, so we had to, you know, play along. But that's all it was, play. We never meant no offence to Governor Mendin, nor to the lawful authority of House Winterscale. Gives a chance, eh? We just want to wait until everything blows over and we can go back to our cells and quietly do the rest of our time. Does the fact that this serf is presently confined and therefore has previously betrayed the trust of the Imperium servants need to be vocalized? Or is it evident of the late, persons unintended in the sacred mysteries of logic? A repentant, honest heretic. A novel. The low-born speech is mottled with colors that conceal his true, darker hues. The old man has a long history of lies, and he is using his wiles on us as well, but... I see no foul corruption or ill intent in his words. Hmm. All right. We shall engage with the audience then. There you go, chat. Spare them or spear them. Uh, Sandu says we need a traitor legionnaire. Maybe someone like Lord Arcos from the Siege of Rack series. <laughs> oh, now that I would get us on lost. a few inquisitorial radars. Hell, maybe a survivor of the Alpha Legion that was a part of the Lord Arcos' group that managed to slip past the Inquisition and the Dark Angels. 
I do imagine that would raise a fair few eyebrows, though. A, a lot of eyebrows. Very arched and very authoritarian eyebrows, honestly, as well. It might lead to severe complications. Uh, to need to never imagine female hot Necron as a romance option. Even with my active imagination, I have a hard time imagining a hot female Necron, I must admit. And Spark7907, obscure lore stuff, gets, in ti gets its time to shine in this game. And oh my, the choices, you're in for lore, man. But could you do a lore video on rangers? Ra Ranger? Rangers? Rangers? Well, as with so many other lore requests, <laughs> put it on the list. The long, 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 long list. Mm. A fallen dark angel. That would probably be a slightly less spicy choice. You could make a little bit more of an argument for that, probably, rather than a straight-up actual honest-to-god emperor traitor. Spare at 62%. Oh, 60, oh, oh 40. Twenty mm, percent lead. That seems fairly, uh, fairly substantial. We shall be sparing the void ruffians then. Anyway, you should live another day. Oh, that's so great to hear, your nobleness. Just great. Now there's a true aristocrat, not that warden creep. Now then, your nobleness, where was I? If you're ever on Footfall Station, there's this district there. The Shadow Quarters, it's called. That's because it's located behind the statue of our holiest emperor. I've known folks who call it something else, also on account of it being behind the statue. Don't repeat their mistake, I tell you. The Reverend Hieronymus wasted no time finding and burning them all. Forgive an old man for getting distracted, so footfall. The Shadow Quarters. There's a bar there, built into the remains of an old ship. And in that bar, in the back room, a certain riser does her business. Tell her Grandpa Buckval says hello. It'll be her favorite client in the blink of an eye. There we are. Well, your nobleness. We'll be going now, if you don't mind. Old riser, the most well-known fence on footfall. I was hoping to hear a new name. Oh god, another one? Uh, heretical, you may go. Iconoclast dogmatic. <laughs> All right. Here we go again. <laughs> and then what? One, two, and three. I didn't expect this decision to spiral quite so far out of control. Three whole steady donates uh, five dollars. If only your party members were a bit less reasonable, many lives could have been saved. So much take talking only to end in holy fire, right? I uh, see again, and they were so like, there's nothing wrong with this. It could be an innocent satanic shrine in the church of Lethander. No, it couldn't. No, it literally, it, it honestly, actually, genuinely, unironically could not. Like, there is no instant in which building a shrine to Satan in church is going to be a sign of something innocent, okay? There is no scenario in which that is just like for the ha-has, all right? If I had just been allowed to brain the priests right then and there, this would not have been a problem. And instead, we had to go on a six-hour-long expedition to come up to the fact that, yes, the heretical traitors are actually... Dun -dun -dun -dun, heretical traitors. Shock and surprise. Service guarantees citizenship. Uh, Robert Wadsworth, wouldn't it just be hilarious if we got companion who turned out to be a changeling messing around? Be a cool companion for a heretical playthrough. It would be. Honestly, like, each playthrough should have unique companions. Like, you should have a heretical, an iconoclast, and a dogmatic, at least. And they should all be, like, ancillary companions added onto the game, like, sort of later. So, once you'd kind of staked out a path, then you'd get one of the three, right? Now, that would be a real reason to replay the game, you know? Alright, 52% to Iconoclast. 
All right, that seems pretty, uh, pretty overwhelming. Iconoclast it is then. I shall not leave you here to die at the hands of the Warden's henchmen. Go, tell my pilot that it is the Lord Captain's order that you be sent to my ship. You will join my ship's crew. You have my personal pardon as a rogue trader. Uh, thanks. <laughs> we are most grateful, your nobleness. I won't tolerate Now, weakness. bringing aboard traitors onto my ship is a pinch risque, I will say. They, uh, they might have a change of allegiance further down the line. But we do Victory need new servitors. We, uh, we unironically do need more servitors. Perplexed. Why did you get perplexed? As we did have to disassemble and space a, a uh, for me. fairly significant number of them just the other day. Follow my and lead. thus we got over here. A shortcut. More dead dudes. So this was very clearly the work of the Warden himself. Which is interesting too, because apparently he was using his position as Warden to screw everybody Same over. Because there was also a mention of preferential meals. So he was giving the prisoners good food in order to bring them over onto his side whilst he proselytized to them. And there's they a non-zero chance never as well anyone. that um, I help others better themselves maybe by he mixed something into that food. At every step. Uh, just a little bit of a little bit of something, something in the gruel, shall we say? Or oh, some cases, an ally's resolved by two until the end of combat. That is an effect of voice command. They're the next turn with one action point. That's cute, but not necessarily that good. And uh, I'm right, equal to fellowship bonus. That one's quite good. Uh, just after the next turn, all melee attacks made by the target's deal additional damage equal to officer's fellowship bonus divided by half. So that would be three damage multiplied by the number of enemies to the target. That's what use. Me, 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 me. We can all cover and it will have double the effective distance. That's good if I give Cassia a sniper rifle, but. Heresy's the question. Fire is the answer. <laughs> um, four cells. I think I, I think take aim is more um, is more um. Goddamn! What's the word? Flexible. There you go. Uh, Zero has been a member for one month. Thank you very much for your continued support, sir. And says, uh, Navigator Chan. Navigator Chan indeed. Best waifu. No doubt. Two movement points. Not a bad idea, ever. Um, I'm thinking... Uh, what about Laz weapon? I mean, if I can respec, I, I might as well just pick something, right? Hmm. 25%. That's pretty nice. I have, I have hmm. lost. Shit. The first... Uh, nice! That's really good. Grenadier. Okay. I need to want, might want to pick that one up. Right. So Lord Imperium is pretty good. Uh, persuasion is really good. Commerce and Coercion are really good. Um, honestly, I don't think I need any more of these. If anything, then it's just... Ballistic skill? I'm basically 55. Which isn't terrible. But it could be better. Let's uh, let's get one more ballistic skill. Adel blood, blood. Uh, weapon skill or strength? Weapon skill will give me up to fifty. Strength will give me up to fifty. Weapon skill for now, then. Right, and you're kind of turning into the squad medic. In a way, aren't you? So we'll give you ten of that, too. Ah, uh, Genta, darling. Can't get any more ballistic skill yet. Um, perception, then. 
And Bolt Weapon Expert for that 10% armor piercing. We've been hesitant to get that one so far, but... I uh, can't take take aim yet. Ah, because I already have that feature. All right, well, that's nice. Um, oh, yes, move, move, move would actually be excellent for her since she gets to uh, start the uh, the turn before everybody else does. Uh, Laz Weapon Expert, maybe? Her ballistic skill is pathetic, though, so... Yeah, she's going to need to level up that ballistic skill a bit. Pascal? Mm. Intimidation. Mm. Mm. One way, ours gain armor until the end of combat. Eh, that's kind kind of good. Tactical knowledge then. Heavy weapon proficiency. Uh, character training skill. I would like Medicaid Fires of the Forge. Mm. Oh, okay. There we go. Flame weapon, melter, solar weapons, power weapons, nimble lands weapons. None of which is that valuable. And I can't upgrade his strength yet, because I've already got that feature. Hmm. None of these are that valuable then, but... Toughness is always going to be good, so make it toughness. Uh, weapon skill, that will give you up to 50. No brainer. And Law Xenos. There we go. Nice and simple. Uh, Sand Doom says one last suggestion for a space marine companion. This one is a long shot, but what about a legionnaire who was lost in the warp during the time of the Great Crusade? Maybe a legionnaire who hadn't uh, a gene father like warthounds or dusk raiders. Maybe, but it is definitely a bit of a long shot. My success is an irrefutable certainty. It certainly None would be stand in my way. an interesting contrast. As to him, this would be a, uh, a very weird galaxy. A very, 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 very weird galaxy. Okay. A bit of a bit of a backline approach, eh? You know what? Yes, that sounds like a pretty I good idea. Get weakness. in nice and close there. Oh wow, you can get. We oh, Jesus. are the spearhead of the Imperium. Oh jeez, you can get really I'm close. Listening. Okay, Pascal and Adelblad. I'm watching your back. Sins hidden in the heart turn all to decay. You can we stay over there. Act. Hmm. But I think those need destroying. Color the uncolored. All right, Cassia, come with me. We're going to go on the other side. I've never wondered so we much. We shall before. prevail. It's about time. Uh, something's obviously going to go down here. You, Lord Captain? Yeah, because I remember I need to destroy those things. Dusk Awoken prisoner. I'm Awoken at your prisoners. Service. I told you, Evie, they are, they are hidden. They are hiding so much from us. Arrogant mentors, holy brothers and sisters. What have they ever given us? Nothing but a pile of fibs and useless admonitions. But Aurora, she is different. She spoke with me like no one ever had before. She revealed the truth to me, and now I can reveal it to you. If you just stop struggling for one minute... What? We have guests. Well, for Valencia's ship, I would wager. 
Evie, my dear, you will have to wait. Do not faint, I beg of you. It is important that you feel everything, including your other eye. Such a dreadful shade. The colours of this place, they are putrescent to the core. And these people, their colours are oozing with madness and despair, pain and doom. This place was corrupted to its core long ago. Keep your weapons close, Lord Captain. Hmm. Aurora was felled by my hand. You have nothing to hope? Well, surrender now, heathen. You barely know what you're talking about, don't you? You may have killed Aurora's mortal shell, but the prophetess is far more than her body. One day you will meet her other, fearsome form, and you will know the sheer folly of your triumph. I do not like it when people take the prophetess Aurora's name in vain. I desire your death, enemy of the truth. Never any point in having this conversation to begin with. And for words is past. Ultimate, give your power to this harbinger of Aurora. Let our foes see the truth or become a wash in blood. Submit, and you'll die quickly. Yeah. You will fall. Yeah, that wasn't much of a conversation, admittedly. <laughs> I don't know what I'd expected. Right. Adelard and Pascal. You'll move up there nice and ready. Lovely. That's a pretty good situation right there. Uh, the real hallucinator says, I mean, which is more likely your entire religion missed something as massive as the head deity has a daughter that has opposing symbolism to the entire pantheon, or it's a heretical evil cult? Yep. No, no, never mind as well the simple fact that, of course, the evil cult also used... Um, oh, actually... You know what? I'm not accustomed to being Instead ordered of buffing around. myself, I'll just blow... Oh, oh, that has... That's a lot Shoot more hit points than I was hoping. They also had a falsified document in our D&D &D, uh, tournament as well. It's like, okay. Done. Not only is your doctrine entirely opposed to the god you profess to worship, but you have falsified the document supposedly giving you permission to do so. It was blindingly obvious. Yes, come closer to Pascal's axe. He will tickle you gently with it, yes. Uh, so Alright, well this looks like a work for some bolter fire. I will Let's bathe just this go over there in there and fury. kick in the full auto. I will not. Oh. Oh, have they made it so you can't fire that in melee now? Okay, well, that is intelligent. I feel like you could do that back in the day. Right? Boom, I'll boom, do it. boom. Die, bitches, die. This is why I was chosen. Revel in slaughter. See, Giant Lantern has been a member for five months. Thank you very much. Cargo management still non-existent enemies can... Congo management, still not existent enemies can pass through each other, but your companions body block at each other movement, etc. And I'm still in Act 2. Wow, inventory management. I thought they'd gotten rid of most of that. Still non existent enemies can pass through each other, but you're coming to somewhere. I'm still in Act 2. Hmm. One creature bleeding on the target. That one then. Me. Running by near it. I'll, I hope I'll avoid most of the problems, hopefully. Oh, enemy. He's clearly a bit of a tougher lad, this one. Alright, Cassia, could you, uh, no. If you try to full auto that, you're gonna shoot me in the back of the head repeatedly. Hmm. But there isn't really a whole lot I have read tomes of military to shoot tactics. me either, so, uh... God, woman, how wide is your spray? Woman, how wide is your spray? That is not a thing you should ask a female, incidentally, but... If I may. Well, good job, Cassia. You, uh... You... You did not hit a damn solitary thing. I am... Serves? I am impressed, but don't worry. I still love you, 
even if you can't actually hit anything. I, I still oh, think you're adorable. Easy. In fact, your inability to hit the broad side of a barn, if anything, just Not makes you more adorable in my visage. Pain and you go hand in hand. Well, thank you for putting another bolt in your uh, your allies back there. Always appreciated. I won't object to it. Chase down that heretic. And we'll bluff Adelblard, because glory. you always bluff Adelblard. Bluff Adelblard? Bluff Adelblard. This is not what I intended to say, but it is what I did say. Right, you are... Wait, didn't I? Oh, no, I hit you. Okay. Pew, pew. Nothing of value has been lost. Service guarantees citizenship. Suits my purposes. Uh, Henrik, some temporary hit points. And Cassia, if perhaps you could put in a slight bit more oh. effort in uh, hitting the enormous thing next time, that would be absolutely adorably lovely. Mark target. Extra wallop Indeed. and splutch. Your pathetic reversal attack means nothing to Adelblad. You may tickle Adelblad. Uh, but that is all you may. Rejoice in battle! I feel like the unholy lenses were uh, more of a problem last time I played this. Perhaps they need to actually be activated. Faith without deeds is worthless. Ugh, or is something bad going to happen now? <laughs> God damn you, piece of shit. Okay, parry. Cassia. Emperor, darling. give me strength. Please, try again. Better, better, darling. Still still not ideal, but and you made an effort. I'll put my psychic abilities to use. I wish you could blow people up with your psychic abilities. I won't object to it. Nothing stands against me. That would be nice. Nothing I can't do. And pick. you didn't stand a chance. Adelblard believes you should not be allowed be to stand anymore. Adelblard I believes will do my duty. you should explode now. Someone else can do this. Ah, yes. That was why we need to destroy the, the lenses. I remember now. It would be nice having your personal resurrection device scattered all around the room like that. All right, Argenta. Guided by faith. Can you, uh, can you see it from there? As the emperor commands, I act. Mm, not really. I'll do it. Right. Well, quick reload. Pascal. Um. You go for it too. You proved honestly to be somewhat shit at dealing with that guy, so we're just going to leave Adelbard to tank him because Adelbard's really not going to have any problems whatsoever tanking him. Me. Cassia, you, you may simply your continue your long-term pursuit of damaging that thing. Please help open Pickle Jar. Suits my Very purposes. well, Cassia. There you go. Cassia, great. Everyone, step aside. Sometimes, sometimes the fairer sex needs a little bit of aid when it comes to destroying things. It's entirely normal and natural. You should only mock them slightly for it. And only for maximum crit. five minutes at a time, okay? Anything more than that is a little bit excessive. What about this? You can't fire the God flamer in Malie either. Be the fire in my heart. How needlessly cruel. Well, that achieved absolutely nothing. Heavy is the tread of his faithful. The scriptural prognosis is favorable. 
Cassia, any uh, chances? I am a navigator, not a servitor. Good. You didn't do much damage, but you tried. I need a foothold. To be fair, we are destroying yeah. enormous, massive optical lenses made out Forge of what ahead. appears to be just solid black metal. So, you know, there is that. A tactically sound approach. Stop running away from Adelblad, you little woman. There is no... F there is no escape. Not in that direction or any other, for that matter. I will bathe this battlefield in righteous fury! Beyond the science of all, comprehends all. Two points is two points. Oh, unless you miss. Not a problem for me. Eh. Victory is imminent. The and enemies of the Emperor will be undone. With a burst of high explosive bolts. I request a mandatory ocular augmentation. Yeah, yeah, Pascal, I, I, I see why. I, I didn't expect her to shoot just you in the back of the head. Fair enough. All right, Cassia, this is your opportunity Isn't to come in sex? and be the pinch hitter. Which you failed that. Okay. Well, I have, I have lost. My tactics are flawless. Pickle jaw. Uh, I'm pickled. Tried and tested tactics. Proceed are the best to beat ones. the bad person to death. It will be done. Double rock. Oh, come on. For fun for Lancius. This is why we Indeed. need to increase our weapon skill, goddammit. You've done enough to help today, Argenta. Just stand by. There we are. The enemy has been successfully liquidified, Commander. Uh, friends, Anchor says, Hey Arch, just wondering if you could give me your opinion on Rogue Trader 40k, if I should get it. By the way, I've been watching your channel for years. Love your lore videos. Thank you very much, sir. And absolutely, I think this is a really damn good game. I think it's a very good game that does 40k honor. Uh, young Son 2, his very first Super Chat as well. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, discovered something cool, depending on your choice of feats in the character maker. You can actually have the Master of Ordnance calm himself down before you need to either punish or forgive him. Really? Interesting. That is kind of cool. I had no idea about that. And Weird says, Wokies are still monitoring the reaction channels, trying to stop them from sto to stop them from your videos and diverting them to Templin Institute. <laughs> what? <laughs> Alright, well I feel like having woke people tell people to go elsewhere is only going to increase foot traffic, so I don't mind knowing too much. Oh, didn't read that, actually. Is in a bad way, but timely assistance from a sher... 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 sh... Sergen! 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 Surgeon! Jesus. Well, save his life for now. I will do what I can. On the rare days that Lord Wincescale visited Eurus 5, the station was awash in the midst of warm hues. We were forbidden from meeting each other, but I was delighted still to see such a rare colours in my home. Now, however, his colours are darkening, twisting from pain and bitterness. We must help, Lord Captain. We must save the clarity of his soul, for he whose presence makes the world a little brighter deserves no less. Lady Cassia, I presume, the sacred child of House Orcelio. How disgraceful it is that on the day we finally meet, Elevain locks away in shame, I find myself not at my best. There is no disgrace in your predicament, Lord Winterscale. The Lord Captain I met under similar dreadful and tragic circumstances. Oh, hello, Lady Cassia. I was far more presentable at the time, I will have you know. Hmm. Finish him off. 
I'm sorry, sir. I can't be sure you're not corrupted. <laughs> Nuzzles long laughs up to his head. Mm, yes, competition is bad for business. I mean, <laughs> corruption is bad for your Imperium, after all. <laughs> it's a little bad, isn't it? Uh, conserve your strength, sir. We shall keep you as a company. Yes, we shall trade you for benefits for your house. Wounded? I would have praised it altogether differently. Tortured and maimed, perhaps. Have you ever had your eyes burned out? This was my first time. I cannot say I recommend the procedure. It was apparently uncomfortable. Hmm. We'll... Yes, give me into a blip. We'll, we'll, we won't ask him a whole lot of stupid questions. I want him to live. He is probably going to be a uh, wonderful source I'll of uh, claim to the well, manners of favors from his papa. Never kill the rich brat until you've talked to talk to the papa. God help me. Click the button, then close the window. Ah, oh, yes. Sulfur mines. Very, uh... Very classically sulfur-esque, that. The... The running rivers of warp stone. Follow my lead. Very natural, very, uh, very normal. Very non-corruptive, I'm, I'm sure. I'm certain the environment has absolutely nothing to do with all of these people going a little bit cray-cray. None shall stand in yeah, my like way. Normally, I highly suggest you keep people away from the fluorescent green material seeping forth from the earth. It tends to have negative consequences to those who uh, pick at it and play with it. Victory awaits! And it very rarely, if ever, tastes like lime. You know, far too many things lie to you on that regard. It's like when you look to the... Your launchship. Uh... Relin, you have been crushed. You have, you may go to your lord now. Is Orbinski alive? Is he is he alright? He Yeah, he's 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 pretty good. Um he's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, he's he's fine. In uh, in in one piece, largely, overall. Overall. It's about time. Uh, a pinch reduced here and there. There are some uh, minor ailments like the lack of eyes and one of his limbs may or may not be missing, but beyond this, he is hale and hearty. Optimistic, I would go so far even as to say, in fact. And what's over here? Augurs notice a large object among the lifeless rocks covering the planet. A void ship whose signature and origin are impossible to identify from orbit is resting on the edge of a deep ravine. The hull of the unidentified vessel is severely damaged. Rocks around it shattered by the force of the gigant gigantic machine's crash landing. The augurs haven't detected any vital signs aboard or near the vessel. Xenos. A landing party reports via Vox as soon as they touch down. The colossal void ship before them is covered with spikes. Oh. Oh. It resembles a morbid beast sculptured from darkness itself, menacingly hanging over the ravine. An experienced veteran accurately determines the origin of the unholy vessel. It belongs to the Xenos race called Drukari. Ready to collapse at any moment, the void ship emits a long, woeful creak, as if promising to drag along into the abyss below anyone who dares to disturb its slumber. A dark Eldar spaceship on a planet. Now there's a story. Adelbard suggests finding out what Xenos were doing in the Reichardt system. Yadira tells Lord Captain that the voice in the head are screaming repeatedly words harboring a darkness and death. <laughs> I want to Destiny. The recall people from the vessel. Argenta eager to say that the only good Xeno is a dead one, a true servant of the God Emperor, shouldn't solve their hands with Xeno's technology. I've been sent to Xeno's worship to collect valuable findings. I mean... I, I think Argenta's got the right on this one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Argenta's got this down pat. Crush the Xenos and wipe their taint from the galaxy. 
When a landing party shuttle exits the atmosphere of Rykad Majoris, the rogue trader's flagship fires a salvo at the ravine and the void ship perches atop it. Rocks engulfed in the scarlet blazes of the explosion look like a bloodstain sprawling out on the grey, lifeless face of the planet. The holy flame blessed by the Emperor himself has melted away the abominable void ship once and for all. His will be done. As is ever correct and right and honest. See, I'm sure there was loot down there. I'm I'm sure there were lots of kawaii loot down there, but it's a heretical void ship. It's a Xenos void ship. Burn. Burn, 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 burn. And burn them again. Taint. Cannot be allowed to persist after all. A new challenge for me? Greetings again, your lordship. Master Fan Kalox, it pleases me to see you in good health. I hope that you accomplished uh, what you intended to at the Electrodynamics in Obium. Dedicated nod without saying a word. After an uncomfortably long pause, a medin clears his throat and can quickly turn to you. I can't express how grateful I am for your help. Now that the insidious heretics' designs have been thwarted, nothing stands in the way of my plans or yours. With Aurora dead, the spirit of revolt is waning. Entire squads of rebels are surrendering. We are witnessing the final days of the uprising. That is correct. I have already signed the order to allocate 2,000 first-class void furrows to you. Their transfer to your void ship should begin any minute now. I would also like to salute the savior of Rykad Minoris, and I have already a festi have already a festive celebration to be held in your honor. I have already. I am presuming you are meaning I have ordered. We will celebrate your victories with an ancient custom, the triumph. You will drive through the city streets accompanied by a guard of honor, as befits a hero who has vanquished the Imperium's enemies, while your trophies will be displayed to the jubilant crowds. Let me know once you have concluded your business in the system and are ready for the triumph to begin. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think I need to... Um I think I'll buy those, of course. Uh, do I need I'll to talk to anyone else? To the stars. I don't think so. Let's have a quick look at the journal. Check, 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 check. Nope. I think we're pretty, pretty much good and gooded. Service guarantee. Zero donors, two pounds. They arch respect your elders. <laughs> Well, sir, may I say, fuck you too. <laughs> I won't tolerate weakness. <laughs> oh, that one was very cringe, and I approve. <laughs> uh, Mesua pattern bolt pistol. Nice. Um, guns. Modified Bolter, Psychic Body Gov. Sire rating, that is well past more forty. Heresy hmm. is the question. Fire is the answer. Cute. <laughs> and that is a plasma pistol. Needle ring, single silver needle coated with viral toxin. Oh. Modified Lasgun, Ceramite Stormtrooper, Carapus. Neat. Um, I mean, the Mechanicus is always gonna. I don't know. I don't know if I need any of this. Let's. I'm gonna hold off on all of my stuff for the time being, just to see what other stores gets opened up. I think. I will level up, though, because uh, I know what's about to happen. Uh, oh, possible. Uh, Third turn. Uh, if the Vindic turn doesn't need to build up with zero AP, they will suffer three direct damage. What? No, I'm not. No, 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 no. That's, that's dumb. 
Uh, well, attack. The answer is always given one till the end of the officer's next turn. Section belongs to the end of the officer's next turn. Meh. Blood of Martyrs. Head over gank that elegant temporary wound. Uh, eh. See, so resolve the officer's role is increased by three. Meh. I mean, that's not bad. I'll do that one, because I still don't know what the fuck the characteristic was, but I'm presuming it's something good. Actually, it, it was... It was Fellowship, wasn't it? Which is useless. Arm of Contempt. Hmm... Plus officer's fellowship bonus. Yes, that's pretty good. Yeah, be vigilant. I really don't need more commerce or coro coercion, so uh, Lord Imperium, it is then. Adelblad. Desolation. Yes, absolutely. Plus three damage, definitely. Uh, Carouse, I guess. It's the... I, I don't know when I'm going to be using the Carouse ability, but... Mm. Uh, back in ruin. Unpredictable. Four ones are plus and blissful at two moon point. That's pretty good. Point blank. Integrity is not bad. Plus 10 ballistic skill is a pretty big deal. But that's only when they're at full health. Um, I like point blank, because point blank's a boss killer. Uh, now, I would like the heavy weapon proficiency. That one. Because her strength is 30. So with that, I think she'll be able to use heavy bolters right out of the box, if their requirement is, what, 50? I think that would be very nice, very nice. Yep, increased range on abilities, absolutely. Uh, coercion, commerce, persuasion, don't need any of those. Awareness, awareness is the only one that I even mildly need. Pick that one up. Utility, McAndrite. Tech use and demolition by 10. I mean, his tech use already 90, so I don't feel like he really needs one. Uh, Cause I push them two cells away. Ten plus perception. Hmm. He's raised one AP. Hmm. Prediction protocols. That one seems to be probably by far the best. Uh, weapon skills or strength or toughness. His strength is strength, because that will give him up to 40, which will give him the next point of proper buff, as it goes by uh, full 10s, I believe. Uh, desolation. Yep, that one was great. And no Xenos. Nice. Right. I am ready to begin my triumph, sir. None shall stand in my way. The DCV Titan says, Aunt, I want to wipe their taint. Out! Wipe it out, you filthy little. How dare you. How dare you suggest such a thing. How dare you. 
Speaking of how dare you, I heard that COPE 28 achieved absolutely nothing this time around as well. <laughs> to everyone's surprise, I'm sure. Mm, Master of Ceremonies. Your Lordship, peerless Lord von Valencius. I am the Master of Ceremonies of Rikad Minoris. Everything is in place for your triumph. Allow me to give you a brief summary of the upcoming event. Speak. You will take the road, now familiar to you, from here to the starport. You will be accompanied by your comrades in arms and a guard of honor. The body of the heretic, known as the Prophet of Aurora, will be pulled in your wake as a battle trophy. A stop is planned in the middle of the road. There, grateful citizens will rush towards you, praising you for their salvation. Carefully chosen, grateful citizens, I'm sure. Not to worry, this is a thoroughly, a thoroughly choreographed interlude. The group of the grateful people will be composed exclusively of loyal citizens, vetted by us, members of the military, young people, attractive and physically fit. Mm, a few healthy children. A woman of my own heart. You can't risk ruining such a photogenic opportunity by having some ugly children in there. No, 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 no. Nice, blonde, blue-eyed young boys and girls. Yes. Once they have said their praise, the procession will move on. Governor Medin will await you by the starport, starport. It is also where the pyre has been built for burning the body of the heretic known as Aurora. You will be handed a flamer blessed by a representative of the ecclesiarchy. You can choose to personally perform the burning, but if you wish to underscore the amicable alliance between House von Valencius and House Windscale, it will be fitting to pass the honour of the burning to Governor Medin. However, the choice is yours. It's disgusting. I don't want to show a stage show of gratitude. Uh, allow the normal people to speak to me. No, an excellent plan. I'm ready to start. <laughs> Seriously? Oh, oh, I, I want the, the real people on this planet. They, they should come not this far. The real people of this planet are the traitors, heretics that have turned most of it to rubble, I wish to point out. The real people of this planet were firing lasguns at me about six hours ago. The real people of this planet have dragged people through the streets and ritualistically blinded them for shits and giggles because a woman who claims to be the sun told them so. Okay? Mm, are we on the same page? Are we okay? Mm, good. Sir, sir, sir. I sometimes I just I it's don't understand time. choices in RPGs. Sometimes I'm just like, who dreamt this up? What manner of mouth-breathing retard could have come up with a solution quite so thoroughly repugnantly stupid? Surrounded by evil, repelling emblems, Aurora's corpse looked like a tiny island of gloom in the glorious ocean of your impending triumph. The governor's people must have put a lot of work into protecting the body from decay, as well as saving, saving, so sawing off the grim iron face mask. The dead prophet has the weary, unremarkable face of an utterly nondescript commoner. The one aberration of their appearance is the many small mouths on their cheeks and forehead. Yeah, but having mouths on your forehead is a pretty large aberration. They have been painstakingly soon shut with thick thread and plastered over with a layer of face powder. The cosmetic transformed the heretic's face into an eerie mask. Corner for a mouse is frozen in a hint of grin, wryly mirrored by her lesser mouths. Are you pleased, enemy of mine? The grin seems to ask. Hmm. I have won, and you have perished. Toy. <laughs> Step away from the corpse. Victory awaits. Ah. Multi Melter Sponsons, are they? Ah, uh, they could be. No, those, those are Multi Melters, right? Are they Flamers? No, I think they're Melters. Are they Flamers? No, I think they're Melters. I don't necessarily approve. Uh, Lehman Ross should never be that close to the enemy, but uh, I approve of the fiery nature of it all, if nothing else. Mm, yes, feast your eyes upon me, peasant hordes. See your betters walk amongst you and remember this day forevermore. 
sear it into your eyeballs. A poor choice of word considering the circumstances, but you get the idea. Make way, make way, let us greet our hero. Glory to the Font Falencia's dynasty, glory to his supreme glorious greatness, Sir Art of Terror, a hero of Rikad Menores. The grateful citizens wish to present gift to their redeemer. For whatever reason, you know for certain that right at this moment the gaze of Aurora's dead empty eye stockets is fixed upon the back of your head. A thought surfaces in your mind, not a voice inside your head, no, a mere thought. They are all going to die, befuddled, deprived, never having seen the truth, and it's all because of you, enemy mine. Hmm, something terrible is about to happen. I have, oh, I have no. lost. Reject this heretical waffling for what it is. Heretical waffling. Rakad Minoris honors the Emperor and bows to his most loyal servant, the Road Trader. Acacia has a moment. I'm sensing something boundless, blue, golden, dark. Oh, you mean like those colors painted uh, on the orgy death fuck chamber? Um, that that icon in the in the prison planet? Those colors? You're you're sensing those colors, are you? All right. Well. I guess we're about to have a little bit of a prison planet down here as well today. Okay, these new golden stamps is that pain blade is looking very on a wall. Slim and rust battle tank. What are you even on about? Henrix simply says what? Behold, behold the final dawn. Would you look at that? And then the festivities really started kicking off. Ballistic skill, also known as bullshit, enhances the effectiveness of attack with ranged weapons. It is true. Well, like I said about this planet filled with heretics, what, what, is, what is our opinions on the farce now? Like, oh, it's a farce. Let the normal people come. Well, the normal people are currently firing at you. In case you were... Ooh. Well, those are Eldar warships. And they're doing something pervy with the sun. Mm. Well, that's almost wholly negative. See, this was a bit of a clever twist, though. Because once you stop them from blowing up the nuclear power plant, well, you know, that is the final dawn. And you did stop it. Except take a knee they and bow before had a wider definition down. of the final dawn. Alright. Where's the largest gathering of heretical filth? Adelblad, you take care of the front. Pascal, you get the rear. Argenta, you get the right flank. Hmm. Could I order move, move, move now? No, I don't have quite enough, do I? Let's not place anybody inside of the rolling purple cloud. Because the rolling purple cloud is almost certainly not beneficial. Argento goes first. Alright. Well. Is there no way to, like, draw out a path here? Because, uh, If I do that... Rejoice there you go. Battle. Okay, yeah, you can do partial moves, thank god. Hmm. 
Now let's make sure, shall we? Doubt kapoom, 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 kapoom. Alright, well that was pretty goddamn awful. Cassia, um, Me. Argenta, how about you try that you insist, one Captain. more time, eh? Well, better. Service guarantees citizenship. Not ideal, but better. Alright, what do we got? So, that guy's still alive. I feel like unaliving him is probably one of the better options, but let's get Adelblad buffed up and ready to go. Already done! We can buff up Argenta All as well for easy. her next round. And hopefully pick purposes. this Acolyte Cultist Nothing off. Of value has been lost. Don't walk through the purple fog, you dumbasses. Did your local ecclesiarchy priests teach you nothing? Purple fog good though. It swirls so prettily. Fenrix. Hmm. Get me a target. Can you let's do that and it. still move? Oh boy. Okay, let's be a bit careful with that, shall we? Oh, that's a that's a veil decreaser too, eh? I okay, let's you. not then. I feel like already we're pushing our limits somewhat, so uh Let's not play too much with the warp just now. The veils does seem a a pinch thing. My place is at the fore. Thank you for aiding properly and adequately placing me, woman. It will be done. And four. At your beck and call. I think Adelbard is about to get attacked by a lot of people. I took care of this one. Cassia, my little darling. Um that isn't a veil problem, isn't so. Nice. If I may. I really should have given her the thing that reduces veil thingy, because uh, I was thinking like, oh, but veil isn't really a problem nine times out of ten, and that's true. The veil isn't really a problem nine times out of ten, but then there is the tenth time when the veil is absolutely a problem, like um, oh, right now, for example. Get out of the way there. Advancing. Advancing. Switch. Burn Burnton on his two units. Isn't this more of a final dusk? Well. To have a final dusk, you do need a sort of kind of final dawn. Ish, sort of, kind of. I mean, there must have been a final dawn at some point, it's just that we didn't know. See, if you want to depress yourself, you can think of all of the things that were final that you didn't know were final. Like at some point, for example, you and your childhood friends, well, went out to play. And it was the last time you would ever go out to play. Feel sad yet? Hopefully. And Zero says, I think Argenta learned to shoot using a flamer. It does seem like that, doesn't it? Oh, hey. More bad people. Hmm. Uh, well, Henrix can probably take care of that. God Emperor, move through me. Be the fire in uh, my heart. Let's do that free reload. I'll do it. Rapid fire. As the Emperor commands, I am. That's a better round of shooting right there, yeah. That's more like it. Faith without deeds is worthless. That is a lot more like it. Let's see. We'll pick that one off because there's no reason not to. Not a problem for me. 
And since Argento oh, just reloaded, there's no reason not to punt a couple more shots down range, right? I'm sorry for this rather sudden betrayal over there, little guardsman, but uh, uh, never mind. I didn't betray anybody because I didn't hit anything. Thank you, little enforcer. Although, shouldn't these technically be named wardens? Because I'm pretty sure they named their people the wardens or warders or something equally mm, non-conformist to standard imperial law and regulations. Cut them down. Continue to cut them down. Their filthy heresy shall not stand. It will be done. Be done. One fewer target. 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 Indeed. I took care of this one. <laughs> oh, I love that. I really do love that. All right, Adelbard. No the cost. Continue the slaughter, fine sir. <laughs> um. Reduce the task. <laughs> Cut your it glorious path. Through the enemy hordes. Oh, I didn't kill them. That's almost disappointing. Yes, yeah. yeah, surround Adelblad. Surround Adelblad. Nothing bad could possibly come from surrounding Adelblad. Nothing. Nothing bad whatsoever. I'm not accustomed to being boarded around. Battlefields are always drowned in scarlet. I should get her a sniper rifle. I really, 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 really need to get her a sniper rifle. Because her accuracy is absolutely god-awfully abysmal. And that somewhat reduces her uh, effectiveness. Although, um... Damn, I should have used that on Pascal before I moved. Oh well. I'm afraid not. Alright, Pascal, you're just gonna have to leg it the good old fashioned way. Nice. I dodged the flamethrower by dodging into the flamethrower. Hmm. You see, fire is coldest at its core. The further the fire gets away from the source of the fire, the colder the fire gets. It's, um, it's not necessarily very logical, I admit, and yet, as you can quite clearly see, that is observable In reality, thy isn't it? I stand, and thy light I crave. This is why Come I on. was chosen. As the Emperor commands, Come on. I act. Okay, then. I'll do it. Come on. Eradicate it. Faith without deed each strike is a prayer. I'll do it. Come on. As the Emperor commands, I act. Lovely, lovely. Oh, no. Let's see how they respond to this. The purple pudding clouds are increasing. Hmm. Housing me oh, was your oh, biggest nice. mistake. All right. Only one more heretic is left standing. Right? Yes, right. I'll put my psychic abilities to use. No, no, I don't think you shall. I think your psychic abilities shall be uh, kept in the cellar for as much as possible right now. At your back and call. Your psychic abilities is at least partially the reason why we're in this mess to begin with. So please, Henrix, contain yourself. There we are. Filthy. Filthy heretics. Lord Tin, this is Master. Please, Il Ilmd, will send a. Vigdis. Pertain, perfect, repeat. I shall fear no darkness, for light is within me. The light of my faith in thee. I shall flee before no enemy, for there is no enemy more terrible than cowardice, and I shall overpower it. 
Red, black, red, black, and lots of blinding white fear. The whole city's quaking. No, the whole world. Let's talk. More action. What's Victor saying, Lord Captain? Are they going to send a shuttle for us? We must move forward, out towards the starport at once. The shuttles aren't going to find us here, even if the comlink stabilizes, which it won't. Star P the Starp. Vini V observe separance of the star from evacuate. Well, whatever is going on, gentlemen, I do believe everyone around here is thoroughly fucked. Luckily, we have a spaceship. Hmm. <laughs> We're not abandoning people into dust. Everyone can come with us. I do need more servants. See, this is the first time I have fully agreed with the heretical one. I am under no obligation to save anyone. <laughs> it's not my planet. I'm not the Winterscale Dynasty. I'm a completely different one. Does anyone have any idea what happened? The final dawn. We stopped short of puzzling out the enemy's entire plan. Oh, Emperor, forgive us for this negligence. I swear we will find a way to right it. Only an incomplete picture. Every warp active person on this planet is sensing the presence of sorcery. It's rising like a tsunami. I've hardly ever encountered anything like it in real space. And most remarkably, the sorcery is still growing. I cannot, however, say what set off this reaction or where the light has gone. A chill runs down your spine. You seem to feel auroras gazing upon you again. Only it's not coming from a corpse any longer, but from everywhere. Rogue Trader, we must help these people evacuate. The Emperor himself has entrusted their fate to us. Very well, Argenta. If you say so, waifu number two. Desper and I must get weapons, any weapons. We'll catch up with you at the starport. We might even pick up some people from the garrison or civilians along the way. Prince of Alarm is now almost physically drilling through your templates, temples. The fleeting little whisper off the edge of your hearing are sinister and gleeful. I'll lay claim to the stars. If number two waifu demands it, we will obey. It is simple decency. Plus, it is, as Chaz points out, a great deal of free labor. A new challenge for me. So much forbidden pudding all over the place. But it is forbidden. You shall not partake in the purple pudding. Follow my lead. For the purple pudding does not wish you well. The purple pudding is your enemy. And the purple pudding will harm you if it can. The purple pudding is actively malicious. I actually don't hear you because you're not voice acting. Owlcat needs to be given more money so they can voice act everything. It would spare me a tremendous amount of labor. None shall stand in my way. Oh, well, there are bad guys over there. But I am tempted down here to I see won't tolerate weakness. if the purple pudding hides anything. Tragically, I do not be believe the purple pudding has obscured any secrets. The forbidden pudding is just that, forbidden. Foreboding and in inaccessible. Deal All right, Argento. Sets my path. You know what you need to do. Kablammy blam blam. I won't heed your cries of mercy. Are you ready to die? Okay. Well, that was unexpected. Um. 
And that does complicate my situation somewhat. Now, Adelblad, make sure you're blocking that thing and giving Argenta uh, a decently free way. Pascal and Hendrix as well. We are lining ourselves a little bit up here for an automatic fire, though, so that's not great, but... Me? If you insist, Lord Captain. I, I do, I do. God damn it. Hmm. What about the flamer? Ah, better. Lightly grilled enemy of humanity. Doubt is for the weak. Argenta, let's buff your accuracy for the coming turn. Not a servitor. See who's up next. Argenta is up next. Okay. In that case, Adelard, let's have you move, move, move. Right on out of the way. Beautiful. I really love how this game focuses far more on tactical movements than most other RPGs. Like, in many RPGs, it doesn't have that many abilities, right? Because the abilities are tied to weapons, so it doesn't have all that many abilities, which is a little bit unfortunate. It would have been cool if there were more, like, spells and psychic abilities and shit like that. The but the fact that many of your abilities are focused around, like, clearing firing lanes and setting up, like, mass casualty events like this, that I really do appreciate. I could have done Concentrated Fire first, actually. That would have been even better. My ears are ringing. As the tactical imperative dictates. Smash. The scriptural prognosis. You may be a Chaos Spawn, but you do... Oh, hello. I, uh, I didn't see you, but you do not have the testicular fortitude to deal with this. That's actually quite a lot of Chaos Spawns. Hmm. Ugh, Honestly, the Chaos Spawns aren't necessarily that dangerous. Their biggest issue is that they are very low. Oh, yeah, I don't think we're going to be... Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we're going to be doing any of that here now. They are very, very big bags of hit points. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be using anything that uh, screws with the veil today. You didn't stand a chance. I don't believe it. Why? Nothing I can't do. Oh, should have moved first. God damn it! All too easy. Could have gotten rid of that stupid thing, Fraddlebard. Although, can I still do it now? Yes, I can. Right, okay, because well, that ability gives you the infinite range thingy. Yes. Nice. So, Adelbard is no longer on fire. Good. Um. I will do my duty. All right, let's try and one shot this piece of shit, shall we? And pound his butt. <laughs> 51 damage. That's what we like to see. Right, well, they're kind of slow, so oh, I'm not too worried about going in to go down there, but I'd prefer it if the fire name. starts. I call this, could stop I it. Care of this. There we go. Um, that's a walk and a half, but you know what? Adelblad's fond of walks. Oh, didn't see you. I could actually have charged you if I had. Oh, a cultist leader, eh? And within Adelblarding distance, how very, very unfortunate. Be cross my gaze. Isn't this a job for the serfs? Uh huh. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. Uh. Okay then. I am a navigator, not a servitor. I guess that piece of rubble was a little bit more uh, uh, 
non-permeable than I'd uh, expected the rubble to be. Run and gun. That's the one. Yeah. I refuse. This is unacceptable. Nah, woman. All right, I can't. You're gonna have to finish that one off. Blonk. Fortunately, chaos spawns are not very fast. Fortunately, too, they've managed to. Lined themselves up quite lovingly. Oh. Okay. Well. Pascal, you just. The Emperor is on our side. You just stay there. You might as well toss a few bullets down the stairs whilst you're at it. Never wavered in the face of adversity. Okay. Argenta. Suits mine, it's not buff. It. Let's do so. I don't have time for this. Not my specialty. Nothing I can't do. And we could probably tear them apart with Argenta's full auto. <laughs> Zero done. It's two pound stage. I just remembered. GW killed Yarek off screen. Yes, they did. Yes, they did indeed. Victory is imminent. In one of the more remarkable instances of Adelblart. In one of the more remarkable instances of what the fuck? Yes, Commissar Yarlik, hero of Armageddon, the uh, the greatest orc to have ever lived. That also happened to be a human, was killed off screen by Games Workshop. Reasons why? I don't think anybody knows. Me. Insist, Lord Captain. I don't think anybody knows, and I don't think anybody is ever actually going to understand or know, not fully at least. Isn't Scott. this a job for the serfs? Alright, Argenta, my dear. You're uh you're probably going to have to get a little bit closer than what is, strictly speaking, me. healthy here. Yep, yep, you are. Uh, fire our mastery. Concentrated fire. Rapid fire. I have, I have lost. Let her rip. Hmm. Extra chunky, chunky sauce. The Emperor commands, I act. I'll do it. Ah, oh, God, so very close to killing one of them outright. Good job, Argenta. Very nice. That's, uh. That's two chaos spawns that were really threatening a second or so ago, who are significantly less threatening now. The answer. <laughs> All right, filth. Let's see to it. Ah, uh, none of this, none of this can be used. All of these abilities will lead to very unfortunate circumstances. Should I use them? Right, can I see any of these guys? No, I can only see the chaos spawn. Not a problem for me. Argenta, then. Kaplonk, kaplonk, kaplonk. Nice. How is Adelblard doing? Adelblard is Adelblarding, as is Tried usual. Tested tactics are the best of us. At your beck and call. I really should remember to just use that more often. It will be done. 
Adelbard's ability with pistols are still somewhat lacking. Uh, Belial donates twenty dollars. Thank you very much. I find it funny that V, while talking nonsense out of his ass, seems to always roll nat twenties in D and D. He does do that. He does. That is why he talks so much shit out of his ass because he's relatively certain that even if he spews garbage directly out of his sphincter, he's relatively confident in the ability of God and dice to let him get away with it. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. Yeah, yeah. I endure. That is not the Emperor's will. I refuse. As the Emperor commands, I act. Right, not too bad, not too bad. Those two chaos spawns were definitely not as dangerous as they could have been. Nice shot there, Pascal. I don't know what you were aiming for, but it certainly wasn't the enemy. Uh, but Arch will come up with some of the best role-playing speech I've heard in a while. Can't roll above an eight. Yes. Everyone this incidentally, Sargon, if you're Naturally. listening, is why we tend to give people advantages when they do well like that. When they, uh, when they do something that is more in line with the universe, you should give them advantages. You should... How the fuck should I... Okay, well, I'll take the shot. Has been long. I'm, I'm not going to turn it down. I'm just... I'm just wondering hey, how... No, that's too close, isn't it? No, it isn't. Yay. See, this is the, this is the way I do it when, uh, when I do roleplay. Uh, basically, you have to make the argument. And you have to actually make the argument. Of course, if you're in a hurry, etc., and you're doing something super simple, then you can simply describe what you're doing. Like, okay, you know, I go into the shop and I tell him to order me X boxes of whatever. Sure, you, you can just do that. That's fine. But if you're talking with an NPC, you should actually have to speak to the NPC, you know? And if you talk to the NPC in a way that seems likely to increase your chance of... Uh, getting any benefits or bonuses out of it, uh, then you should get bonuses for that. And Sargon does do that, at least sometimes, like when I pissed off the preacher, for example, by saying that the moon is nothing but a pale reflection of the sun. I rolled shit on that, and Sargon still let me get away with it, so he's definitely giving some benefits. I just wish he'd give a lot more benefits. <laughs> Honestly. And maybe furiously punish V more often. Sadly, this acolyte cultist is hiding behind a, a sheen of forbidden pudding. I, I shall have to delve within the pudding. I object to it. I shall not fear. There was also with the peasants. I, I think Sargon is doing it more and more. I think he's he's rewarding roleplay more and more. Because when we had to deal with the peasantry, I again rolled like shit, like ten uh, above, uh, beyond, below average, and he still let me pacify the crowd. Oh, you dead yet? No. Okay. Please die. Thank you. Much appreciated. What ails you? Now, Hendrix, please step out of the forbidden pudding. I'll lay claim to the stars. Thank you. Navigate your way forward whilst avoiding as much of the forbidden pudding as possible, gentlemen. He comes. A new he comes. For me? He cometh. You don't want to be there when he cooms. You think it's dark right now? Oh boy. It's about time. You should see it when we actually cover the earth in his coming. Oh boy. Not only will it be really dark, it'll be really sticky and disgusting too. Trust you me. I won't tolerate weakness. You will. You will not want to be there. You will wish to dodge as much as you can. It's mildly unfortunate that Cum Dodger is considered Victory a bit awaits. of an insult, because frankly, I view it as mostly a virtuous action. Oh, 
Not necessarily a topical one, but virtuous indeed. <laughs> Could have used the Dark Sun setting. Listen, Sargon knows one setting. D&D &D 5 edition. <laughs> and he barely knows that. <laughs> He's not going to learn something else. And, to be fair, there is a good reason for that. It's because Sargon's very busy. And learning an entirely new edition of a role-playing game takes a lot of goddamn time. So I don't blame him for that in the slightest. A new challenge for me. I did suggest, like, maybe we try uh, um, Pathfinder. <laughs> no. We are, we are not going to try Pathfinder, as it turns out. And considering how ridiculously complex Pathfinder can be, that's I'll probably for the, the, the better. You have been ambushed. Right. By the people over there, I feel like I could have seen them coming. Right. Cassia. Battlefields are always drowned in scarlet. I am a navigator, not a servitor. And a blard. My place is at the fore. I'll just get you into cover over there for now. <laughs> Whilst we try and figure out exactly where all of the bad guys are. Sharpshooter rebel. Okay. That's a priority target, obviously. That was a lot of las shots. Alright, how's the veil? Uh, the veil's actually doing a hell of a lot better here. I'll put my psychic abilities to use. Put that on Cassia. Quick little mini heal. Also do the For reinvigoration. The but of course, Lord and Captain. Ow. Me. If you insist, Lord Captain. If I may. Alright, let me get my little tush Forge into cover. Ahead. And then we'll see who the better sniper here is. Suits my purposes. Nice. Your biggest mistake. Your biggest mistake was engaging me in a sniper duel. Mm, little gay homosexual. You know what we need more of? We need more sniper movies. We really unironically do. I'll do it. Concentrated <laughs> fire. A rapid this fire. Is unacceptable. And boom, boom, boom. As the Emperor commands, I am. There's the, um... Like, there are so few sniper <laughs> movies. Oh, damn. Judgment. Nice round of shooting there, Argenta. Brilliant, brilliant. Happy One of the... the only good ones I know of, right at the top of my head, is probably Enemy at the Gates. Enemy at the Gates is a really cool movie. Even though it has its weaknesses, oh boy does it. Like the fact that all of the hardened Russians are played with, played by um, pretty boy Americans, for example. I'm not a fan of that. I don't like that. It's, it really does take away from the, uh, the overall Nothing setting of it all. Like, they do have, um, what was his name, um, Ron, Ron Perlman in it, which I do appreciate. Is, is it Ron Perlman? You know, the, the weird dude, the guy that looks weird, that looks like he has a face that has been hammered repeatedly by many people. That one, that guy. He played, um, he played, um, that red guy with horns. I know, I'm being extraordinarily descriptive today. Uh, Hellboy or something. Get me a target. I think that was Ron Perlman. Uh, he's an enemy at the gates. And he does a pretty good job because at least he looks... <laughs> he just... It's like, yep, that Emperor, definitely does look like a much abused strength. Russian during World War II. I can't really me? argue otherwise, if frankly. You insist, Lord Captain. There's also the fact that they turn it into kind of a, a love story, which is like, okay... I mean, I don't I hate it because Not it's essentially there to give us a bigger reason to care about the characters, right? So it's like, okay, oh, yeah, you, you don't necessarily care shot. about this random Soviet soldier, but 
if he's about to have a relationship with a pretty woman, then you're like, oh, I do actually Nothing care whether or not he gets sight. to, uh, you know, test out his <coughs> Mosin Naga to we get my drift. And die. And go. You know? But it, it doesn't really fit in with the, the overall the Second World idle, War part, does it? Grows. Particularly as it is a brutal the goddamn movie. It is a today. brutal fucking movie at times. Like the I'm opening scene where they, they give one a rifle, one ammunition. It's like, yep, you're going to charge the, the Germans with this. Me. And they all get cut down. The scene in the Duty statue where they're lying around dozens of dead Germans. They kill the first German officer, etc. Uh, the fact that the political officer is like, Blessed wow, this has some tremendous propaganda value. Pay attention. All of that stuff is really, really great. And the scenes where he's actually dueling with the German sniper too. Excellent, 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 excellent stuff. I better myself through Particularly my as they make the German sniper... Sin like, really competent as well. They don't fall into the trap of just being like, ah, oh, he's a schnazzy spatzy. Yeah. None shall stand in evil, my yeah. way. They make him even a little bit sympathetic. Like, he, his reason for doing this is because he's practically a have, aristocrat, you know? For him, this is almost hunting. He's not really specifically it's dedicated because it's political. For him, it's like, oh, well, you know, it's a pretty great challenge. And Stop he'll use what he there. can to... Uh, to get an advantage. The little boy, too. Oh. Actually, I won't talk about the little boy because the little boy is a fantastic Victory twist. Awaits. But that was an excellent way of demonstrating that both sides have their uh, issues over all of this. And that war is, at the end of the day, war. What other? Um, Follow my lead. American Sniper. Was that the name of it? I, I think that was the name of it. American, American Sniper. Uh, that one was a pretty good sniper movie too. It's a new challenge for me. very, very poorly marketed. Uh, what's in here? I won't tolerate. Is that weakness. the exit? Because I, I don't think that's the exit. No, that's not the exit. American Sniper was a pretty good movie. Uh, it was badly marketed because it. I mean, even the name and the cover, it feels like just... It, it seems like just a dumb American propaganda movie, but it isn't. It's actually a pretty damn good and complex story. It should have been called, like, something like, I don't know, Hero or something? You know, something a little bit more ambivalent, or just, like, his name or something? It shouldn't have gone for the gung-ho, like, American Sniper! Like, that, that sounds like a fucking Saturday morning cartoon. Like, Dread 3D! Like, ah. Uh, mm. Uh, Belly Al donates a further five dollars. Well, I know this is heresy. The Russians do have some pretty decent war movies. Some with snipers. Too bad they all speak Russian. Quack, quack, speak. Russians do have some decent ones. Uh, Admiral is another one. A Russian war movie. Uh, that one's quite good. About the Russian Civil War, in fact. That was quite good. Anywho. The stench of feceline blood blankets the starport. Echoes of shouts and gunfire drift over the landing pads. The shards of plex glass crunch underfoot. You recognize Sergeant Maglar amid the crowd huddled next to the shuttle. He was the soldier who greeted you upon your arrival on Rykad Minoris. The sergeant's chest it fitted with a sturdy looking flak vest bearing insignia customary among your troops. One of the enforcers you sent must have given it to Maglar as a gift. A group of bloodied and frightened people is wedged between Maglar's wardens and the shuttles. You recognize them as the governor of the planet and the member of his high-ranking entourage. Their expensive attire has been torn in the fight and many bears wounds left by a bayonet. Examine the people. Some of the nobles are paralyzed with fear. Others have succumbed to despair. Two corpses are lying on the ground with their arms outstretched. Black blood has pooled under one of them. The other skull has been split open like a nut, encircled by a pinkish crimson halo of blow, blow and splinters, and bits of brain matter. Hmm. Mm. Sergeant Maglar, I demand immediate force. What is going on here? Sergeant spins around to face you, his face a twisted grimace of anger. Our esteemed governor and his gang of <laughs> cronies, as he just throws some jam at him have been cowering behind us, and now, when things got rough, they thought they could scarper and leave us here to die. 
We've shed our blood for him and broken our backs to provide for him. And after all that, you think that's fair, you piece of grox shit? The governor spits out blood and opens his mouth to respond. When his head explodes, his body falls Service limp to the side, his remaining eyes staring upwards. Okay, <laughs> enough, you've said your piece. For generations upon generations, the nobles of this world cared for Rikad Minoris and assured the prosperity of its inhabitants. And this is your gratitude, peasant? For killing a nobleman, you deserve to be executed where you stand. My mentor was right. The rabble truly have no honor. Madness, punishable by death. We don't have time for this. We need to get to the, to the shuttle now. Okay. Here's the thing. Was the governor a big old fatso cowardly piece of shit? Absolutely. No doubt about it. But he is the god emperor's anointed. No peasant commoner gets to carry out a summary execution of his chosen. Hmm. Like quite dogmatic. Look at yourself. Servant of God Emperor. Whom do you serve? Human to its foes. How dare you speak of justice with kinder blood on your hands? Hmm. From the Emperor. You will drop your weapon, servant, or I will end you like a rabid dog. Honestly, he deserves to be executed. I like I like this guy. He he did he's he's pissed off, he's upset, I understand, but the, the, the governor was a pussy though. We'll we'll give him a chance. We'll give him we'll give him a chance. Malga raises his gun at you, Ornut immediately lower it, his hands are shaking, shame and despair are showing through his mask of bloodlust. For crying out loud, your lordship, sir, how can you say such a thing? The dull thud comes from deep in the starboard. Heavy footsteps shake the rock creek, raising an unpleasant tremor in your bone. Oh. You thought you had killed Aurora, false believers. Tremble. For I am Aurora. I am the Herald of Change. Behold the final dawn and die! No! Won't heed your cries of mercy. Death to the false emperor. That was not a very good piece of voice acting, I must admit. <laughs> In fact, that was, that was a kind of an awful piece of voice acting, if I must be pushed to comment. <laughs> but hey, at least it was voice acted. Alright, a fucking word bearer with a massive heavy bolter. Ooh, I hope it's not corrupted because I would love for that to be, uh, for be, to be Argenta's new primary weapon. Right, Pascal and Adelblad, both of you are going to be sent against the word bearer. Uh, Henrix, you get to try and deal with the the riffraff over there. Cassia, um, you get to be back here with me, methinks. Hiding behind whatever cover we can find. And Henrix, again, over there. Adelblad. And Argenta... Argenta as well. Alright, so we get a free turn, and then it's Aurora immediately. Oof, ouchies. Um, Alright, what are we going to do? I'm thinking... I'm thinking move, move, I'm move. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. Because I'm thinking I'm going to want Adelblard to get into combat with the fa big fat fucker. Immediately. Let's go around here. I will do my pointing duty. away from him and give ourselves the buff. Right, that should cut down on his uh, options. Oh, my ears are ringing. Heresy's the question. Right. Fire yep. He has to change to a <laughs> melee a weapon, setback. which I'm uh, pleased by. I'm tickled pink by, in fact. All right. Butt pounding time. For the week. 
I'll do it. Prepare yourself, dog of chaos. Mm. I don't like the fact that that barely Safe moved his health bar. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Well. Um. Very well. He's a he's a tough old lad. Do I want reckless strike? I mean, that's. 25% arm penetration. And I will attack the warrior in return. It will be done. Let's uh, let's see if we can suck up a smack. <laughs> okay, he's got very good parries. So that might not be a wise decision for the future. Cassia, are you in range to uh, buff people? You sort of kind of are, but not perfectly. Isn't this a job for the serfs? Buff Argenta. Uh, a little stare would not be. Be careful not to cross my gaze. That would not be the worst thing here. Oh god, yeah, it would not be the worst thing at all. Very nice. So it's going to leave Cassio somewhat exposed, but it's also going to turn a couple of them into tomato paste. So I don't really mind. Me? Henrix. If you insist, Lord Captain. All right, you're going to be buffing Adelblard for damn sure. Boost everybody's resolve. The Emperor is on our side. Emperor is always on the side of the righteous, Hendrix. I th would think it obvious. Now, with that many dead, I am actually thinking I can afford to get myself a little bit closer. Suits my purposes. Buff oh, Adelblad until the buffs are pouring out of his ear holes. Rebels, rebels, rebels. Is that the best you've got, scum? Opposing me was your biggest mistake. Already done. Argenta. Let's get another burst of fire. <laughs> I thought too highly oh. of your skills. Sorry. Suffering is part of the trial. Oh, Pascal is feeling a little bit under the weather. That's fine. Request approved. <laughs> Take that, bitch. Ooh, a sniper. Well, Jesus. I, I feel have, like I you should have been been forced to take a couple of opportunities of attacks there, you little scaredy bitch. Oh wow. Okay, right. Um I feel as if maybe I should have delayed that uh, doing damage a little bit, as it seems as if the numbers of enemies has increased quite drastically all of a sudden. Well, no matter. In thy light I stand, and thy light I crave. Doubt you cannot outrun Bolter fire, fatso. Actually, hmm. No, nope, can't see them. Hit them. You, my <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We're getting there. Um. As the Emperor let's reduce. Strike is a prayer. I will not. Everybody else's numbers a little it. bit too, though. It's an uncomfortably large quantity As of the heretics. Emperor command eradicated. Faith without deep. <laughs> A lovely round of shooting, my darling. I've seen worse battles than this in my time. After him, Adelblad. Do not Victory allow that imminent. misbegotten heretical scum to escape. Not so easily. I will do my duty. At your back and call. It will be done. Go! 
I think Aurora is starting to regret his choice of enemies. And possibly his choice of allies as well. <laughs> uh, brace yourself, Abelard. For a moment there, I thought he was gonna about, it was, it was gonna be about to be like racist. <laughs> that would have been mildly fun. I'm not accustomed to being ordered around. Let's see to it. Be gone. A fine strike. Me. Yes. <laughs> nice, Cassia. Excellent. Hmm. Oh. Naturally. Let's see to it. Ah. But of course, Lord Captain. Ah, I gotta have it. Okay, I don't want to give him an extra turn just yet either. Alright, where's that sniper bitch? Can I see him? I can. 52% chance to hit. Not exceptional. My tactics are flawless. 64. Hmm, that's probably a bit much. Hmm, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Suits my purposes. Buff Argenta's aim. Buff easy. Henrik's. And then just Suits kick off another one of the filthy little. Never mind, two of the filthy little that bastards. Is Go on, Pascal. I know, I know. Intense You're getting the shit battle. kicked out of you, but... Increase. Such occasionally is the life of a servant of the Omnisire. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I really do I need to kill that dude up there. Easy. He seems to have it in for Pascal in particular. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Indeed. And that is why I wanted to uh, try and keep him away. From, uh, you know, pulling out that big gun of his. That means Pascal's down on his buttocks too, okay. Um Step aside. The navigator is coming. Buff my I aim, may. gotta deal with that sniper. He's picking apart my Me? dudes. If you insist, Lord Captain. And Lord can't quite reach him, but he's close. Henrik, please Let's dispatch see that filth. Thank you. Naturally. All right, and finest I hour. Your death in colors. My place is at the fore. Let's get Adelblad in there again. At your beck and call. It will be done. There. As long as we can keep the fat bastard tagged. Oh, that's right. Finest hour. That's I can attack him many times now. Job. I need a foothold. Heal yourself. For the throne's glory. My odds of hitting him are still, I'm presuming, garbage. Uh, 71% with the buff. That's not awful. We're going to continue advancing on him, though. Nothing I can't do. There you go. Nice. Out of loud. It will be done. Continue teaching that ruffian a lesson. About your innate superiority. Good one, Cassia. Oh, oh. God damn it! And this gonna be another round of pain and suffering. I'm in uh, well, it seems you fucked up, son. There we go. It seems you fucked up, son, indeed. I am a navigator, not a servitor. You should have finished her when you had the chance. 
Nothing I can't you can do. do worse, but not what? by much. How? How on God's good earth did that happen? How? How but on God's course, actual Lord. genuine good earth did that happen? Like, I'm just going to shoot Adam right in the back of the head it. now. Why? What possible reason and or rationale? My house needs me. 60, sweet baby. Jesus. To redouble our efforts. I will bathe this Goodness in gracious, God fury. almighty, screw the fucking space marine, he's not that dangerous. As the Emperor commands, well, this little bitch-ass bastard up there, on the other hand. Faith without deeds is worthless. Come on. I'll do it. There we go. None shall stand in Jesus. my way. Heavy bolt. Yes. Right, there was still a thing back there. It's failed to save game. Please try again. There we go. Victory awaits. I don't know. Oh, really? You were just standing there? You were just relaxing over there, were you? It's like, ah, none of our business. Follow Nuggets. my lead. This explorator is blessed with multifunctionality. A lot of armor. Hmm. Well, loot is loot. I'll lay claim to the stars. How about the rest of the novels? Uh, not doing too well. No. No, not doing too well at all. Hmm. A new challenge for me? Oh, well, sometimes, you know, sometimes you're gonna have complications. And this was one of those times. I do want to find shall stand in your my way. rifle, though. Give, give. Rebel sniper rifle. Okay. Done. Oh, I won't that tolerate right weakness. Uh, Cthulian Itharan, the way you built Cassia, offends the god emperor. Listen, she's an officer. That's what she does. She officers. Simple. And I'm Miss Fowl. Arch, have you seen the new trailer for the American Society of Magical... <laughs> Magical N-Words? Yes, I have. I... Are, are we... Okay, it's not the hard R one, just to point that out. It's... I don't... It's the scientific term? <laughs> I'm, I'm worried about saying it on, on YouTube. <laughs> but yes, the Society of Magical N, uh, yes. Uh, it looks like actually a really interesting kind of movie. Because the thing is, also... I'm hoping that it will be one of those older style things where they're like, the only in the room here is you. That, that used to be a classic line from a lot of stand-up comedies, for example. But uh, we'll see. It looks like Harry Potter for black people, and I personally am very intrigued. Uh, JD's new new gold Sanders says, Unpopular opinion, Saving Private Ryan is a, is a masterclass in propaganda that put most Soviet spin doctors to shame. It kind of is. Saving Private Ryan is a pretty good movie, though. It is a pretty damn good movie. It is a pretty damn good little movie. Little movie. Magical Navigators. <laughs> yes. Uh, thanks be to the Emperor you are alive, your lordship. We are most gratified by your return. The crew is full of zeal to carry out any orders you may have. I think leaving would be, uh, would be, would be a good one. What is the current situation? The Navigator Sanctum is no longer empty, but the warp engine is still refusing to obey the engine seer. Without it, we cannot perform a warp jump. It may be angry, or perhaps it is lamenting the injury it has suffered. I will immediately initiate preparations for a prayer service. If the Omnissai grants me comprehension, I will appease the machine spirit of this vessel. What did happen to the sun? That is a good question, too. 
Lord Captain, we see a number of ships approaching the sun. Black creations of inhuman make. Amalgams of sharp angles and edges. They surrounded the star and then... My apologies, but I struggled to find words that could describe that terrible sight. The Xenos made the sun vanish into the void. Drukari. As if we did not have enough troubles on our hand. Xenos, enemies, enemies of humanity. Law Xenos succeed. Uh, Xenos? You mean the enemies of humanity? Yes, yes, those. Those enemies. A breed of the Eldari, the most cruel and devious of their kind. Eldar, you... Actually, he's an inquisitor. It makes sort of kind of sense for him to use the posh word, I guess. The design of their ships matched the description provided by the Voxmaster. Like all Xenos, the Drukari are a blight on the face of the galaxy, but their technology, technological superiority is indisputable. They abhor and fear warp sorcery, which is why they rely on creations of their twisted intellect. And many of those creations are capable of things that may seem akin to sorcery to the unenlightened eye. The theft of the sun is one example of what they are capable of. Are the Xenos in league with Aurora's cultists? No, they're clearly in opposition to them, I think. I have, I have lost... So no chance we can recover, right can't start? No. Are you proposing that we ask for it back? No, rogue trader, the sun is lost. We must accept that as a fact and deal with the consequences. <clears throat> Situation calls for immediate action. His supreme glorious greatness, Sir Arch of Terror. We can continue this conversation later, if you so wish. But right now, I believe you should assume command. What is happening on the planet? Uh, misery. Pretty much. Our auger operators are reporting numerous uprisings and other manifestations of the arch enemy's powers at various locations on the planet. Based on the fragments of communications picked up by our Vox operator, there is practically no resistance being offered by the governor's forces. Millions of people are converting to the blasphemous Foul Dawn cult en masse and assembling in prayer circles. Do we have any hope of retaking the planet? No, obviously not. I fear that Rykad Manoris is lost. The situation is deteriorating by the minute. We must leave the system as soon as possible. However, there are still people on the planet who have not succumbed to heresy and who are worthy of rescue. Besides a small number of our own shuttles, we also have the shuttle salvage from the starport. We must save as many as we can. This has all happened for a reason. Saint Argenta, whose name I carry with reverence and trepidation, is famed for saving the people of a dying world through the power of prayer. The God Emperor himself sent a star from the heavens that lifted the saints and her followers up into the sky, away from corruption and death. We must do as she did, direct all our efforts to saving those people who at this moment look to the heavens in hope of salvation. The lives of peasants are of little value. Our prime objective is to save the Holy Relic, the miraculous fusion reactor, and the Electro Priests who guard and tend it. Every moment we spend in proximity to a dying world, we are putting ourselves at risk. Your life, Lord Captain, is far more valuable than all of Rikad Minoris. The Fon Falencia's dynasty cannot be allowed to perish, and so lamentably though it is, we must rule out the idea of any evacuation. The world is doomed. And its inhabitants, along with it, the disappearance of the star was the final nudge towards death. The finer finale of the cult of the final dawn's plants. I want to witness a similar the event. <laughs> a world that had surrendered to the servants of the arch enemy and permitted corruption to enter too deep. At this moment, millions of people are bowing down before those who promised them salvation. And they are willingly giving over their souls to chaos. A sacrifice great enough to bring forth a demon world. Our only hope of stopping this process is to retreat to a safe distance from the planet and to conduct targeted bombing of the Electro Priest Monastery. If we blow up the reactor, a thermonuclear reaction will follow. The world's oxygen will evaporate, killing off the entire biosphere. In doing this, we will save millions of souls from a fate far worse than death, and we will save Rikad Minoris from becoming an outpost of the Arch Enemy. Whatever fate you choose for this world, I urge you to make haste, Lord Captain. The plant is burning in raging flashes of crimson and purple. I can see it even from orbit, as I do see that storm is already upon us. With every moment that we waste, it grows ever more difficult and perilous to steer the ship through the warp's turbulent currents. I'm with the lady on this. Enough talking. We need to get out of here while we still can. Oh, boy. Artemis Fennel says, I mean the new new trailer. Well, send it to me then, little Bacchimus. And Zero says the purge the alien, the heretic, the mutant. It is the only, only way.
Hmm, very well. Let's see here. Engage with your audience time. Um, actually, well, these two first. W why can we not try to evacuate? For some reason, the transformation process will soon become irreversible, and our sole weapon against it is useless. The energy released by the bombardment could stoke the warp energies. I have never witnessed the aftermath of bombing a demon world before, but there is enough evidence of such attempts for me to say with confidence that you do not want to see it. And which of the planet's inhabitants? The nobles you rescued at the starport have given the coordinates of shelters where we can find surviving aristocrats and their families. As for Sergeant Malgar's troops, they will help to control the crowds of frightened commoners and prevent the shuttles from being overloaded. Thanks to you, we have salvaged many shuttles from the starport we can now use. Alright. One, two, three, four. Oh, can I only have four? Hmm. Well, five is just like leave and do nothing, so we'll ignore five. So, there you go, chat. Kaboom. Option one is noble deserves to be saved above all others. A sympathetic position, I agree with. Two, have the pilots extract all of the commoners have not yet converted the cult of Final Dawn. Ooh. Three, the miraculous fusion reactor must be saved. I see the point. Four, set an optimal course and carry out an orbital strike on the Electro Priest Monastery. Rikad Minoris must be purged. It will not fall. It will live on in glorious purity to allow it to fall to the wills of the arch enemy. Now that would be true betrayal. The Emperor's fire must save them. Ah. Look at that. I am so very proud of my little audience. So very proud of them indeed. See, normies might think like, no, help the civilians. Not you, chat. You know. You understand. Beliardo is ten dollars. You're a rogue trader. Profit first. If you're not willing to risk your life for fawn swang in stories, then what are you good for? As for the rest, the planet is fallen. Cleanse in flame. Well, Belial has donated ten dollars towards, I presume, dogmatic uh, cleanse in flame. I presume. In which case, he will have it. If somebody is willing to put money down on a decision, it overrides the rules of democracy. For we are a capitalist undertaking. A capitalist undertaking, indeed. <laughs> we are a rogue trader, after all, are we not? Better dead than a demon's plaything? Correct. The Emperor's blessed bombs will save you. It is it is the only way. It, it is unironically the only way. It is it is only the only true solution to any problem like this. Again, cast your minds back to the D D session, dear little rat Blix. Blix Bricks. Imagine all of the Here's lives the that could have been Fire saved <laughs> if only we had reached for violence first, rather than hold off on it and wait, and allow chaos and heresy to spread across the galaxy. Disgusting. Mm. Speaking of disgusting, <laughs> Artemis Fowl donates $11 to say save the peasants. Vile and disgusting treachery. How could you do this? How could you condemn their souls to this? Terrible. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> well, chat. One dollar in favor of saving the peasantry. We are, of course, going to be biased against Artemis. Does it... <laughs> God damn 
Uh, does anyone have a dollar to kill the peasants? <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Billions of lives, so casually and cruelly spent. Mm. I have, I have lost. <laughs> ah, there you go. There you go. See, Artemis is not as crazy as everyone thinks he is. He's not as insane as everybody accuses him of. He's not as cruel and callous as his reputation suggests. As he adds on $20 to say, with fire. Good, Artemis. Artemis understands. Artemis is redeemed, in fact. See, this is why we're nice to Artemis. This is why we will be playing Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach for Artemis. For Artemis' request, okay? I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> FNAF has, uh, has never been a... Uh, <laughs> has never been a favorite franchise of mine. But that's what we're going to have to do now. We're going to have to play FNAF. <sighs> God Emperor save Archer's soul. Did he use the new gold standard? When in doubt, choose profound violence. Correct! See, this is what I'm trying to teach my party as well in D&D. &D. And it's not like we were in doubt either. Like, violence is the ultimate authority that drowns out all others. Like, you can argue, meow, meow, but what if they're innocent though, meow? No, they're not innocent. And if they're dead, they'll have no way to, to bitch about it. Okay? None. Burn so Permson to Tiaros, let the Emperor's justice account in all balance. Uh, end train, Arch, send him to the God Emperor's side. You know, the Emperor will know his own. He will. He will. See, this is what I'm saying. The if they truly are pure the of faith, <laughs> then God will know. It's the beauty of being an extreme puritanical inquisitor. You can never, ever be wrong. Service guarantees citizenship. And Chaplain Weird Dream never let it burn. Let it burn indeed. With 50% of the, the popular vote and a crushing majority, the planet Rikad Minoris is saved. Is the question. Fire is the answer. Yes, Lord <laughs> Captain. I would immediately inform the navigation and artillery decks of the impending maneuver. The right choice, Lord Captain, and fellow Ratbricks. May the sacred exterminators so cleanse this yet. veil of corruption. The bridge is in upheaval. The Technomat's prayers mix together in a senseless cacophony, while servitors work have, hastily to remove a hardened crust of sacred unguent from the warp engine's components. In the middle of all this tumult stands Pascal with the data slate clutched in his hands, seemingly disconnected from the flurry of activities around him. Like, why isn't the computer working? I don't know. The sacred oils are fill It's full of sacred oils. Could that be the reason? No. Why would that be the reason? Hmm. Uh, so start acting like it, you blasted cog. Mm. Let's be nice to him. He is a servant of the Omnisci after all. Thank you, your lordship. You are right. Tech comrades, heed my instructions. The mayhem immediately subsides and the crew's actions fall into some indiscernible logic. The Omnisci servants start working in sync and the binaric clamor becomes a symphony of reports which the Magots coordinates like a skillful conductor. Admirably be done, cogboy. You're not just good for your effeminate features, I see. The Omnisire guides me. Please take your place at the Cogitor, Lord Captain. Step up to the Cogitor. The huge machine in front of you is lit with dozens of vid screens and hundreds of lumens. The blinking lights and endless rush of symbols and digits on the green background make your eyes water, and a vague sense of alarm simmers in the depth of your mind. The typical reaction of a layperson when confronted with the magnitude of the Omnisire's creation. Among the numerous controls, you see the mouth of a cyborg, cyber gargoyle, the same as the gar goyle, 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 the same I as have, the gate of the warren chamber. Shit. Ah, this will requ require me to bleed again, won't it? <sighs> PCs in the forty-first millennium. Uh, this will require you to bleed now. What? 
Some, at some point in the distant future, Windows 11 became standard operating on all systems, and that's why this is happening. Servants of the Machine God, heed my command, acolytes. Prepare the incense instrumentation for the liturgy of machine spirit pro... 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 Senior Technomat, recite the prayer to generate a current data report. Operations will be marked with the campan campanological protocol. Omnisire rejoice. I must inform you that for the purpose of safety, complete a reassembly of the warp sextant and updating of its Zetasmith blessings are required. If this is not done, then a launch at the volume of aggregate calculations error could result in the destruction of the data crypt. But as we do not have 100 hours at our disposal, we must omit this procedure. A minor deviation with the right of operation for the sake of appeasing the spirit. <laughs> Listen, can you do this all without me? No, we require your blood. What must I do? Place your hand inside the throat of the Cogitator Guardian, the Cyber Gargoyle, which has been designed to guard the forbidden data crypts. The dynastic blood extracted from your veins will serve as a key to the data core where the machine spirit dwells. To it we will offer our praise so that we may bypass the protective protocol for defective connections and launch the warp sextant. The law of the Omnisire knows no exceptions, and so in this ritual I will remain at your side to placate the wrathful machine spirit, in whose abode you will be intruding. Follow my liturgies, Lord Captain, and may we receive his blessing. Alright, time to fist the machine spirit. The metal jaws clamp down on your hand, breaking your delicate corporal sheath and releasing warm red liquid into its gullet. Same moment, the image of the vid screen before you change hers. Connecting. Hmm. By my authority. Servants of the Omnisire make now the offering of cleansed data crypts to the machine spirit so that it may be filled with their true and calibrated data. May the Omnisire have mercy on our souls. In meek solemnity, the acolytes offer up the clans, the data crypts to the warp engine one after another, repeating prayers of exaltation. After anointing the contacts with sacred engines, Pascal inserts them into the cogitate slots. Your head begins to spin from the holy sense of for sense of foul smelling clouds of smoke, and from the loss of blood, the cyber gargoyle continues to drink from you, and its world swims before your eyes. Let this mechanism awaken in renewed purity. Pascal enters a sequence of commands and raises his head. Watching the vid screen, suddenly he stops dead. No. His fingers fly over the command runes, entering command after command. His mechandrites clicking, their pincers pull at one lever after another. The vid screen filled with strings of symbols, completely uncomprehensible to you, but clearly conveying something to the Magos. Is everything alright, Magos? No. <laughs> after a few seconds, one of the data crypts mounted on the cottage begins to emit sparks. It's unfortunate. A moment later, another data script does the same. The next bursts into flame and gives off a foul smelling smoke. A little bit too much sacred unguents on that one, Acolyte. Around you, the Omnisized servants break off from the prayers and someone bursts into frantic pleading. The mass of errors in the warp sextant's calculations is destroying the data repository. The offering did not appease the ship's spirit. The warp engine cannot be filled with the motive force. We are trapped. Perhaps an alternative Ryzen protocol or an emergency launch of the auxiliary coils. While the other vid screens are filled with more and more strings of symbols, the monitor in front of you blinks and its static images changes. Pascal is too engrossed in his ritual to notice. <laughs> Magus Hanuman, a moment if you will. Uh, Pascal towards you with a flickering visor betraying his anxious state. Lord Captain, I. He stops short when he sees the vid screen. Distorted transmissions from the data core. Most likely the residual cognitive functions of the built-in servitors. Omnisire shields us from machine ghosts. Machine spirit? <laughs> Can you hear me? Let's not read it. It's way better if we don't read it. The cognitive servants creaks quietly on its joints. A sound that is drowned out by the binaric hymns and tapping of command roofs. Uh, injury, rescue, query. Rescue? Yes, Machine Spirit, rescue us! Hmm. Useless pile of scrap. Let's not be mean to the Machine Spirit, shall we? It's currently biting my arm, after all. Uh, 
I clicked the wrong thing, didn't I? Oh, God. Well, this is going to go bad. Registered warp sector activation. Registration data stream stabilizing. Registering zero data errors found. Reporting the warp engine is ready for translation. Actually, that was the correct end thing. Hey. I'm also reporting evidence indicating a Category 3 miracle fulfilling the criterion. Thou shall witness the mechanism that toils in glorification of its function and in defiance of deactivation. Lord Captain, Raver here. The crew are almost finished carrying out the orders given earlier, and I've just received confirmation from the engineering halls. I don't know what you did, but the warp engine is up and re raring to go. We're ready to begin the translation to the warp, your lordship. Go. Waiting for you to ascend to the captain's throne, Lord Captain. May the Emperor protect us. Can nothing continue on this godforsaken ship without my direct interference? Like I'm a little bit woozy from the blood loss. Doesn't matter, Captain. Get in your seat. Is that blood running down the back of my seat? Because I think that's actually rather un- No, it stopped. Okay, that's good. Oh, yes. This looks safe. The warp shutters are being lowered. You wouldn't want to look outside when you're in the warp, trust me. It does weird things to people. flagship made its way out of the doomed star system. As the void shift plunged deeper into the Corona's expanse, the rogue trader's subjects bid a formal farewell to the late head of the dynasty, Theodora von Valencius. Having paid their last respects, the crew gathered their strength and braced themselves for whatever was to come next. I like how they chiseled out her ridiculous hair in stone as well. Lord Captain! Allow me to report, our journey through the warp is coming to an end. Lady Navigator Orcelio informs me that we have reached the point where we can translate to real space in the Furibunda system. I have lost. The Lady Navigator and her pious are awaiting your permission to begin the process. The Furibunda system is home to Footfall, the only Imperium outpost with a functioning wharf in the Corona's expanse. The tech priests are begging you to have mercy on the machines worn down by the warp and to allow the servants of the Omnisire to inspect and heal the void ship's wounds in the dock. The prayers and rituals will take some time, which our astropathic choir will use to establish a connection with the prime worlds of your protectorate, Dargurus Janus and Kiava Gamma. Master Zachary Weiss has received an invitation precisely pre previously a in the Imaterium. The Liege of Footfall has humbly requested an audience with the rogue trader of the Von Falenses dynasty. According to Master Zachary, the message was tinted with shades of pleading. I quote, apparently the Liege is anxious to meet as soon as possible. Footfall, the place where filth and sanctity go hand in hand. Reverend Hieronymus Dolorus will most likely expect a visit from me. I imagine he will be interested in talking to you as well, his supreme glory as greatness and arch of terror. I am leaving your royal ship when we arrive on footfall. His supreme glory is greatness, Her Arch of Terror. Once that is done, consider Lord Inquisitor's task complete. Your Lordship, young Evain Winterscale has asked me to convey his gratitude for your hospitality and for saving him from certain death. Not wishing to outstay his welcome, he plans to disembark at footfall. Lord Evain swears he will not forget this debt to you. I hereby inform the rogue trader that during a comprehensive system inspection right, this unit discovered data clusters with the captain's conscious data that are concealed from prying eyes by means of a personal cipher and a sacrament of algorithmic authorization. 
until his supreme glory's greatness uh, arch of terror von Valencius and been added to the access list and assigned the identity keeper to the unit can access the data from the captain's cogitator provided that he possesses the decryption key ah boy many 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 things are you leaving us Henrix? The arrangement between the Lord Inquisitor and your predecessor was that I'd be transported to Footfall and no farther. I dare not take advantage of your generosity and patience any more than I already have. Alright then. So be it. Argenta, who is Reverend Hieronymus who wants to talk to you? He is the head of the Drusian mission on Footfall and one of the most prominent clergymen in the sector. Paying him a visit is a good thing for any loyal servant of the Emperor to do. I assisted his mission before I joined Lady Theodora on her voyage. I need his blessing to accompany the new rogue trader of the Von Falenses dynasty. If you wish to have me aboard your voice ship, I request that we meet with Reverend Hieronymus. Well, absolutely, and if he refuses, we will have him keelhauled. Hmm. Right, tell the navigator that we are ready to begin real space translation. One more thing, Lord Captain. No one at the station knows about Lady Theodora's demise, and you're inheriting the title. Lee Chakora will be informed. It is required, so we can use the docks. And besides, he is expecting a personal audience with the rogue trader. He will not meet with an unknown person of unclear standing. However, there is still the matter of announcing your arrival. You can either arrive at the station with a proper pomp and ceremony, or choose to visit incognito. That is not a choice at all. I will arrive in the official capacity as his great and glorious greatness. It will be done, Lord Captain. Have, With your gracious lost. permission, sure. I'll return to my duties. Oh boy. Chapter one completed at long last. These are some meaty damn chapters, aren't they? They really, really are. And that is a good thing as well. Let's see then. Um... Daddy is the new gold sun and says, if you think about it, this is actually a blessing. It is. Cthulian Itham, abominable intelligence, purge it later, once it has brought us uh, into real space again. This ship clearly is a little bit more sentient than you would naturally like for it to be, isn't it? It's a little bit too awoken wary of what's going on aboard its limits, I will say. And Zero says, good question from chat. Can Nulls look at the warp? I believe they can. I think there was a mention of um, of Jürgen and Cyphers Kane on a warp bridge at some point. Because you can look into the warp without going insane. So long as you're doing through tinted glass, right? Through specially tinted glass. Some ships will have observation decks. And I believe Cyphus mentioned that he could see all kinds of weird shit in there, all kinds of colors and all kinds of stuff. And Jürgen was just like, I don't, I don't see anything. Like, I have no idea what's out there, Lord. So it might be that they can see it, but they also can't see it, so. Hmm. Anyways, I think uh, we're going to have a mere three-hour session today. No more, no six-hour session this evening, I don't think, sorry as I am getting quite hungry, despite having mainlined an entire pizza shortly before, which speaks to the exhausting nature of this goddamn little video game. So much reading! Ah. But, until next time, thank you all uh, very much for watching, as always, of course. Thank you for your very generous donations, as well, and for hanging out as we continue our journey through Rogue Trader. I'm enjoying it tremendously, by the way, for anyone who's wondering whether the game is good, etc. I think it's very good. I think it gets the uh, the world of 40k down very well. Um, I'm tempted to say that the combat is mayhaps a little easy, maybe. I don't know. I'm tempted to increase the difficulty. I am. But at the same time, we have had some pretty tough encounters too, so who knows, who knows. I, I am tempted to increase the difficulty at least a little bit, though. Maybe one level and we'll see how that works out. 
Until tomorrow and the Archcast, thank you all very much for hanging out and have a good night.